Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays on Twitch and YouTube. How's everyone doing tonight? I was going to load directly into the city. However, I had a small issue. And I'm, well, my microphone's good. All right, I think I'm, I think I'm good now. <laughs> so the game crashed about a minute ago. So hopefully I can get us back in there without showing you guys the next two builds that I'm working on. So I am going to temporarily attempt to to hide the screen so i'm not going anywhere i just don't want to show you the next episode of uh of magnolia county so <laughs> give me one second i'm going to send you to a be right back screen for like two seconds two seconds and then uh, i want to hear where everyone's from so give me one second All right, I'm, I'm, I'm back, I'm back, so we're good now. So this is the city that we're working on in the previous stream. It's called New Market, and I brought in some mods. I'm hoping that's not why it crashed. We'll definitely turn on autosave because we crashed last time, so yeah, we're in, we're in. It's not a beautiful city, but it's got a really detailed cemetery, and uh, my settings are pretty terrible right now, so we'll, we'll need to adjust those a bit. Anyway, where is everyone from tonight? Thank you for being here on YouTube and Twitch. I appreciate it. I'm going to go over how we'll do things in just a minute, but I want to see where everyone's from. I'm going to start it on Twitch and then I'll look at YouTube because I am curious. There's a huge slow mode on YouTube just to encourage you all to swing on over to Twitch. But I see Houston, DC, Orlando, Ohio, Florida, Ontario, Madison, love it. Chandler, Ontario, Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, Edmonton, Victoria, Central Illinois, Salt Lake City, Cleveland. Cleveland, Houston, Atlanta, Canada, Japan. Holy cow. Green Bay. Love it. Chicago. Love it too. Washington State, Wisconsin, Racine, Boston, Chicago, San Antonio, South Carolina, Illinois, New York City, New Zealand, Kansas City, Missouri, Illinois, Southern Missouri, small town, Pennsylvania. Love it. Montreal, Singapore. Thank you for being here. Australia, it's the afternoon that, see, this time works for someone. Right on Lake Michigan, I envy you. West Virginia, Denver, Wellington, New Zealand, love it. And I'm going to switch over to YouTube for a second, and I see Montreal, Texas, Toronto, Boston, Minneapolis, Scotland, holy cow, Sydney, Nashville, Ann Arbor, Maryland, Central Oregon, California, 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 St. Paul, California, New York City, New York City, Colorado Springs, Seattle, Washington, Lake Geneva, love it. West Tennessee, Niagara Falls, Chicago, Mexico City, Minnesota. Thank you all so much for being here. So many of you. I'm not really sure how many, but uh, either way, I appreciate all the support. We're trying a multi stream for the first time. I use the Atom vertical plugin for YouTube. So YouTube is in 4K, so it's a slightly higher quality stream but I will not be responding to chat on YouTube. I'll be responding to chat on Twitch. The main reason for that is really that it's an easier experience for me to moderate, to um, respond to. It's a little bit more interactive and I really appreciate that. Also, the timing seems to be a little bit more real time. If that makes any sense on YouTube, I'll ask for a response and it'll end up taking a little while and it, it's, it's kind of a mess. So this is the way that we're gonna do it. And we'll see how it goes. This will also mean that the VOD will be av available on YouTube uh, for anyone who wants to check it out at a later point in time. And one of the reasons why we're, we're doing this at this time of day is it's 9.30 p.m. for me, which is an excellent time to be playing City Skylines. I could also drink a beer and not feel bad about it. And I was not sure that this was going to work. So <laughs> I really, really, really appreciate you all experimenting so we are going to try to build this city which is new market which is a default generated name maybe we'll have to figure out something else better we said we we're going to do that in the previous one and we never did and the purpose of this city has changed a bit so when we started this in the previous episode the previous stream we were just kind of messing around wanted to try something on a different map i was trying to learn twitch a little bit but i promised someone that i would make a city that was about 150 or better in population and provide it to them for their use. Um, so there is a chance that whatever we make here ends up 
out in the ether and you see it on another YouTube channel in the future. So I want to pump up the population of this thing. So we're likely gonna do a whole bunch of roadway layout tonight and then rapidly zone a whole bunch of stuff in. And we're just gonna try to crank on the population. I'm gonna go very low density and then try to build it up and rezone over time. So hopefully that makes uh, a, bit of, a bit of sense. Uh, Ty, so Twitch did not like cross streaming. They changed their mind. And now what they don't like is if you are to uh, basically have chat uh, on both screen. Uh, so if I were to cross populate the chats and have all the chats on Twitch, that's what they don't like now. So I have a little bit of YouTube integration so you can see when there's a subscriber or a super chat and I will uh, attempt to, to, to thank people for those. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, but the chat is not combined. That is the one thing that would violate TOS. And I'm not an affiliate or a partner, uh, which is why there's no ads. And uh, I figure if I ever hope to become an affiliate or partner, I probably shouldn't violate TOS before I get there. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, Rhino, as you do the exact same thing with zoning, I think it makes a ton of sense. So let's refresh through what we have here. And then I'll talk about the mod I have in the build. I've got one mod. It is the legacy, uh, what, what is the exact name of it? Let me pull it up. We've got the Thunder Store here. It is Legacy Flavor by Cities 2 Modding. And the, the, the main purpose of this mod is so that the white screen that I normally see when I'm zoning, it's not there. So if I wanna see that, Shift W will bring it back, that monstrosity of a screen. But most of the time, I don't wanna see that. So that's the mod I have in here. Uh, it's a visual enhancing mod. I will probably always have a mod like this in here um, because of the way that the because of the way that everything is displayed. Um, I should be able to get an affiliate. Well, we'll see. I, so I think the big thing with affiliate is I need to be able to actually stream a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> um, surprised I'm yet using any of the traffic or tree mods. So I. The traffic mod, I'm, a, I'm afraid of. I'm going to be completely honest with you and say that I'm concerned that if I were to incorporate the traffic mod, it'll break saves. So I'm not worried about this visual mod. This isn't really doing anything to the game. Um, same thing with the tree mod. And I did have that in here. I had it in here earlier and I was actually experimenting with it for the next um, Magnolia County build. The thing is... It just doesn't seem to work 100% the way that you'd expect it to right now. And because of that, I just, I just disabled it, uninstalled it. So at some point, I very well may add that one in. Um, I think it's something I'm going to have to ask you all. Like, you know, I, I know that a lot of people like the Verde Beach purist mentality where I just, you know, um, oh, affiliates only eight hours per month. <laughs> I didn't realize that, Craig. Um, yeah, so I mean, we could go the purist route and not have any mods uh, except for visual enhancing mods or um, quality of life mods as well. I'm not sure the way to go. So we'll see. Bring back Tutoria for CS2. Uh, Tutoria is coming up on Saturday. Uh, do you guys want to know what the next episode's about? I kind of decided to go a slightly different approach. And rather than just demoing features, I'm demoing features plus how to do something. So we're gonna be making a streetcar suburb. So it's trams plus a gigantic suburb. Uh, and, and basically what my, my, my mindset was, I need to show you guys more planning stuff. So I want to take you through roadway layouts over time. And this is gonna kind of be the start of that in terms of you know suburban layouts. So. We'll see. Hopefully you guys like that. It's definitely a little bit different. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I, I lean into planning. That's, that's, so if you, I am a lurker of all things. And uh, on the Reddit, which not many people go on, I don't really advertise it all that much. Um, someone posted that a lot of my builds have turned into tutorials and that was not ever my intention because I don't know that I'm the best person to demonstrate things <laughs> outside of like, you know, planning. So I decided to, to, to recenter myself a bit. So you're kind of seeing some of that in, um, Magnolia, the way that, the way that I'm doing things in Magnolia County is a direct response to the poster in Reddit. 
So if you ever wonder, if you post on Reddit and a creator looks at that and takes the feedback to heart, I assure you they do. It's it's super helpful. Uh, Link. It's uh, oh, go to Reddit, look for City Planner Plays. It, it's a city plan. It, I think it's uh, slash r slash city planner plays. And it, there's not much on there, so it's one of the top posts. Uh, you don't like the broken grids. So there is one thing that people have taught me is go over the top of it with the grid tool and tap it. And then it'll, whoa, <laughs> don't do what I just did. But you, if you go over the top of your grid, sometimes you're able to just fix it. This isn't a great solution, but it does work. And if it's gonna work, I'm gonna do it. So the other thing is I think I just need to calm down. So we're gridding the heck out of this right now because I wanna grow this and we're not gonna stick with this grid that we have right here. I'm gonna continue this. We're gonna redo this side. I, you know, I came in here earlier and I looked at this and I thought, wow, this is a super ugly city. The best thing about this city is that we've got Philip with two L's. If he's still here. Oh, he's still here. So we'll uh, we'll check in with Philip. So Philip is chilling out in his house. I don't know that he's ever left. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he has his tree. That's the very best thing right here. Phillips tree. This is the very best thing about this build. Everything else is pretty pedestrian. We've got a pretty boring grid. And I spent an obscene amount of time detailing a cemetery on the periphery. I don't know what we were doing. We were drinking beers and chatting. So that's what you get. <laughs> but we're going to do better today. We're going to do much better. Yeah, but ugly city. It's pretty terrible. Evict Philip. <laughs> gorgeous cemetery you know this is the very best city to die in so if you if you were going to die somewhere this is the place to do it so we are going to tighten up the grid one of the things that i keep doing in city skylines too is i keep overzoning commercial so we're going to take some of that back and probably blow up most of this and kind of go back to the drawing board so why don't we do a bit of that right now i'm going to Basically, change the zoning here, go down, and I wanna reorient the grid right here. So we have a grid going up the side of the hill. This is really steep terrain. And we'll reorient that. And I think that will do well for us. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So we should have never gone up straight up here. We should have probably if we're going to do it, have shorter blocks going up this way or even better, just don't build there yet because it's not the most, it's not the easiest place to build. It wouldn't be the path of least resistance. That'd probably be buying more tiles and going out this way. Uh, the city is pretty mundane, but the funerals would be fabulous. They will be. <laughs> uh, thanks for multi-streaming with YouTube. For some reasons, note of show up uh, more on my phone than Twitch. Go, oh, that's good. Happy to, happy to be on both. Uh, will Chuckles be returning to Magnolia County? Um, you know, I've commissioned some art and a new Chuckles might be one of the things that was commissioned. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. <laughs> uh, so you said you like the concept of doing a drunken build in one stream. <laughs> oh, geez. That's actually not a bad idea. Speaking of that, let me tell you what I'm drinking tonight. I'm drinking a beer from Kentucky. It is called Bourbon Barrel Kentucky Ale. It's brewed and bottled in Lexington at Lexington Brewery and Distillery, and it is wonderful. So yeah, uh, is this in Florida? This is <laughs> you know, it's warm. It shouldn't ever snow here. Okay, let's try to do something a little better here, and I'm gonna buy a couple of tiles. And I want to grab these ones. This highway, I know it goes to the Golden Gate. It's kind of a it's kind of a pain, the location of it. Maybe we'll do something radial or something like that right here. Have some sort of a signature building. See if we can grab a guideline. And <laughs> we'll already run into issues. So 
I want to keep this interesting, but I also want to grow this thing fast. So I'm going to do smaller blocks. We'll do some radial streets from here. Since the cemetery is the focal point, why don't we really solidify that? We'll just like do something like this. And we'll have radial streets from here, break these up and uh, make it a little bit more interesting. The, the only problem is we got our hill right here. So I don't know, we'll have to do quite a bit of grading, but truthfully on these vanilla maps, you just kind of have to be okay with kind of a ridiculous amount of grading, which is really unfortunate. And our power stations, our, our, our uh, transformers in the way. So, I'm going to do something I never do. We'll pause this and finally fix this up. Uh, let's see. Has Helps has been following. For, okay, Stream Elements. Cool. Uh, Phil City is a great, is a better name than a New Market. I want to see your names in chat. Let me see your names for this. Call it Milwaukee. Capital of, I, I can't name this Milwaukee when I'm drinking a beer from Kentucky. That feels wrong. <laughs> or is it wrong that I'm drinking a beer from Kentucky? I'm not sure. It's really good, though. This is what happens when you play, replace the capital with a cemetery? Yes! Oh, that's that's what we're doing. We should have this going. Yeah, that's the inspiration. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do some Madison inspiration right here. And we'll just make this a capital. So I think we'll just break this up. The only thing I don't love is our blocks are probably inconsistent now. It's 64. Yeah, I'll fix that up. So in the most recent video that I put together, the one that's coming out on Saturday, I experimented with smaller block sizes. And a lot of it's due to some comments that from the Discord. And it's, it's about housing becoming unaffordable. And a way that you can prevent that is to just have smaller block sizes. And it's something that I, you know, the city skylines one mindset is strong sometimes. And part of that is you want to maximize your block sizes. You want nice blocks. Oh boy. We're gonna have some issues with this. Doesn't like what I'm up to. We'll keep we'll keep playing around with that. Uh Casket Town. Phil Walkie. Corpston. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Phil Walkie, Spotted Cow, Gravesboro. So I feel like it has to be something around a cemetery at this point. Mournersville. <laughs> Westfield. Oh, I can't do Westfield. That's, that's, no. Oh. Currents County. Because it's, it's concurrent. Love it. Ferndale. Linden. Old Linden. Two hells. <laughs> uh, Montana. Um, uh, I like, I think, you know what? I think I like Tombstone or Tombstone. We'll go with Tombstone. It's 80 by 80 by 112 grids. I'm, I'm uh, my chat is a little bit behind. Give me one second. Cemetery Town. Smiteville. <laughs> I think we're going a uh, Tombstone. I like that. We'll go with Tombstone. There we go. All right. Now I'm just going to run some grids up and try to return and try to respond to chat a little bit. So one thing that I like to do in these is chat a bit with you guys. One of the things that has been interesting recently is that I've just had less time to just kind of hang out and chat. So I want to do that on these streams and that's kind of why we're doing this. So that means that I'm really generally not all that effective at, at playing, <laughs> but uh, it'll still be fun. Greens from Northern Wisconsin. Love it. Northern Wisconsin has a has a, a place in my heart. So that's 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 uh, that's where I'm from. So love that. Uh, hello from Louisville, Kentucky. Do you think either this channel or another you would look at real world roadway high, highway and interstate layouts here in the US and explain the good and the bad of the layouts? You know, I could. I think that 
I'm not sure if it would fit in this channel. I, I, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. So that's one of the things about Twitch. So I've had a lot of questions. Why, why Twitch? What are we doing on Twitch? A um, couple of things. So the reason why I want to have Twitch, let me turn off the guidelines. That's why these are all getting broken up and looking crazy. One of the reasons why I wanted to, to start streaming on Twitch, first of all, it's a live streaming first platform. So I think that when people come to Twitch, they expect to see a live stream. And that's really helpful in terms of setting people's expectations. You know, the number of comments I've seen from people who don't understand that what they're about to partake in on YouTube is a live stream and not a normal city build is kind of crazy and it makes me feel bad. So that's one of the reasons why. The second is I want to do other things. So I don't want this to just be a place where I am streaming city skylines. My idea as it currently sits is basically that we are going to tiptoe into this whole Twitch thing with some city skylines. And then I want to diversify a bit and we'll look at other games that I enjoy, like uh, Civ, you know? Uh, maybe you guys could help me like Civ 6. Oh, Jedi is here. My uh, my fellow 5B1C brethren. Jedi, you don't realize how often I, uh, I lurk and just listen to you during the day. <laughs> Vanglorious, you're looking forward to a Civ 6 stream? I'm, I, I'm, so Civ 5, sorry, Civ 5, yeah. Workers and Resources, another one. Uh, Manor Lords is one that I'm gonna bring on the channel regardless. Timberborn, I, I kinda wanna really vary it up. And what I'm thinking is it'll probably be shorter bursts of time. The times where I just normally would play games anyway. Why not come on here, hang out and chat a little bit. And it we can test some stuff out, see how you guys feel about it. If I feel like it could be content that would bit on the YouTube channel after streaming it, then maybe we bring it there. Um, if not, we just hang out here and have a good time. And then there's stuff that I just like that I don't feel works at all on the YouTube channel. That might also be fun. I mean, um, we'll, so we'll see. Lots, lots of, lots of stuff like that. So that also could include things like GeoGuessr or even just looking at Google Maps and critiquing designs of cities. There's lots of different things that I could see doing for fun. So. Um, that was a really long answer <laughs> to a question that I don't think, um, maybe didn't want that, but I gave it to you anyway. So hopefully, hopefully it was okay. Uh, city planner plays call of duty, Minecraft. I, you know, I would, I would definitely, so I used to love call of duty. I haven't played in so much, so many years. Um, Minecraft I'd consider. I'm not, I, I'm, I will not lie to you and tell you that I'm good at Minecraft, but I'll play it. Um, what I'd really love, I mean, I would love it. I mean, I'm like most people. Well, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's the wrong way of putting it. I don't know that I'm like most people. Um, I love Nintendo. I'd love to, you know, uh, I'd love to have a cup meet up with a couple of people in Discord and play some Mario Kart and just like do some things that are not city building that I can kind of decompress with because I play a lot of city skylines. <laughs> so it's nice to play other things from time to time um and i still haven't played uh i still haven't played uh counter-strike and i haven't installed so i feel like i should so we'll see what is that that's a new one. Oh, i love that that's great <laughs> city player plays cooking mama Ooh. uh the one game i refuse to play only because it creates fights with me and my wife. She'd probably play it with me, would be overcooked. So that is a game. There are very few games that cause me to not blink while I play them. And that also create fights when I play them. And overcooked has always been that game. And my wife just loves it. <laughs> not the fighting part, but the game. She, uh, like, it's the one thing that I, I, I know that like, if I want to make her day overcooked, that's the one. <laughs> Overcooked disc. I just can't blink. I just can't do it. Solaris. I've never played it. I've never played it. Uh, you think that Twitch could give me the freedom to do whatever I want? Yeah, I do. I do. I think so. Uh, Mario Odyssey. I love Mario Odyssey. So 
Mario Odyssey was a day one purchase for me. And um, when I had my youngest daughter, it was right after the Switch came out. And I they were sold out everywhere. But I just happened, I was going to work for the first time. And I just happened to go to, I think it was like now in stock or something. And I saw that a Walmart near me had one Switch. And it was like 6.30 in the morning. And I went there and I just happened to snipe it before someone else. And I felt bad, but not bad enough to give it to him. And I got Zelda and I uh, haven't looked back. So I got Zelda and uh, yeah, it's been a great, like the Switch is such a great system. As soon as the Switch 2 comes out, it's a day one purchase for me. Abs like without a doubt. This is gonna drive me nuts and this is probably where I just gotta let it go because what are you doing to me? What are you, like, what is this? This is, this is absolute madness. So that's another mod I would add. <laughs> there was a zoning toggle. Without a doubt, I would add that one. Although that one would probably break the build as well. And it's probably because it looks like I screwed up up here at some point. But it's all messed up. Ah, uh, Stardew. Oh my goodness. I have so much love for Stardew. I could, I could, I've, I don't know how many times I've purchased Stardew Valley, but it's, it's not right. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it on my, on my Mac. Uh, I've got it on my, uh, so I bought it for Android, but now I have an iPhone. So I had it for Android. I have it for switch. The first place I had it, I have it on steam, uh, game pass. Yeah. And yeah, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Thank you for the reminder. I need that reminder. I need your help because I will definitely go absolutely nuts on these little grids, not zone anything in. We'll just make a gigantic grid and uh, you'll, you guys will end up ending the stream going, what did I watch? He talked about how he doesn't blink when he plays Overcooked. And uh, that's that's about it. <laughs> um, come on, don't shock me and say I've never played. Listen, Vic, I've never played World of Warcraft or RuneScape. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I know. And Roblox. So my kids are just so into Roblox and that here's where I'm going to sound super old and say that because they like it so much, it's hard for me to play it. <laughs> Maybe I should move past that. Like they want nothing more than for me to play Roblox with them. But I just, I just don't know. You could watch me lay grids all day, broken grids. I don't know that I could watch this all day. <laughs> SimCity 3000. I could do that. Um, Airport, when I can unlock a build, a build a big fire station, usually small station, small cities like San Luis Obispo has one big station with fire trucks. That's a good point. Speaking of San Luis Obispo, that reminds me of my Spotify wrapped for this year. What did you guys get for your number one artist? And did you, were you told where your listening was most similar to? So mine, my, my listening was most similar to San Luis Obispo, which I thought was really interesting. I, I, I would have never guessed. Um, I wonder if you guys can guess my number one artist of the year though. You got Boulder. Langanic Boulder, let's see. Pittsburgh, Honolulu. Are these places where you're at or is it just somewhere totally random? Eugene, Hippocampus. <laughs> so I looked at San Luis Obispo, I drove there from LA and contemplated going there for planning school. And I also looked at Cal Poly. Uh, the, I think, the, well, I was contemplating landscape architecture at one point too, which I don't think I would've been any good at. Minnesota, Canada, Pittsburgh. Hmm. You got someplace in, you got somewhere in Finland, but you're from the East Coast US. Oh, sweetie, you also got San Luis Obispo. <laughs> So my number one was not Motley Crue. My number one, so I want you to know, I have two Spotify accounts. The one that we're listening to right now is Master Plan Music. And the other one is my personal one. And I somehow managed to get uh, Master Plan Music as my number one listen for um, this past year, which was really embarrassing. <laughs> it's like, now, please no. 
Um, and then number two was Thundercat, which is the second year in a row that Thundercat's been my number two. And I feel really bad because Thundercat is without a doubt my favorite artist. So to have Thundercat show up number two again, uh, yeah, very disappointing. Let's see, for grids, don't overlook the method of building roads uh, way past. Yes, I always forget to do that. So yeah, if you just go way past, you can sometimes get a perfect grid and then you can just back out. The only pitfall of doing that, and it's not a very big one, is the trees that you go over the top of end up being really small. But I mean, that's a small price to pay for what ultimately ends up being a really nice clean grid. Why don't we break some of these out like that? And I can't, you can't find master plan music on YouTube because I really enjoy Cranon. It's on there or it should be. Yeah. Thundercat is dope. I love Thundercat. So I got Thundercat, uh, Tyler, the creator, Vince Staples, master plan music. <laughs> and, uh, who's the other one? Trying to think. I'm not sure. All those intersections. Yeah, that may. So all of those intersections means it's going to be highly walkable. Um, Planter ducks in here. What about putting a large roundabout? Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe right there. Is that what you mean? So planter duck is absolutely amazing and it's actually been mentioned in a couple of videos recently for great ideas so i appreciate you being here planner duck uh use my developer points i will we have to unlock trains so that roundabout's not gonna work there i don't think i'll need to find a better spot for it but yeah we're making an absolute mess of the grid <laughs> So I guess we could do, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to take a step back from there and let's do a bit of zoning because I mentioned that we want to take the zoning down. So what I'm thinking is we will basically go wholesale low density and then start to increase the density as we find our downtown core, which may very well be over here. Um, the terrain's just really challenging in this area. And I don't know, I don't know if we want to just like wholesale level this, we could. I've heard that this is the terrain for, for San Francisco from the 1800s, and most of it's been modified at this point over time as grading for projects occurs. So maybe it's not a huge deal. Um, but yeah, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Well, ideally a walkable city would also make it traffic, make it make traffic easier for those who need to drive. Uh, true, true. You I mean, you wouldn't want it to be a complete mess where people are freaking out and trying to make risky movements. Uh, is this a custom map? No, this is San Francisco. Humble Trash Can, 21 Pilots has been your favorite number one for six years in a row. I had Benny Sings last year, who was great. By the way, Benny Sings is wonderful. I'm gonna break these in half, I think. So I think it's a hundred. And if we're talking about walkability, that'll help. Smaller block sizes, more intersections. <laughs> and the thing I'm thinking about here is actually what Planner Duck mentioned. So the thing I mentioned before I knew Planner Duck was here, uh, that we want to have some smaller homes. Otherwise, we end up with all gigantic lots and gigantic homes that are very expensive, and we don't want to do that. Uh, let's see. We're going from D.C. to Portland. We are. <laughs> Mac Miller's been your number one since 2017. Yeah, Mac Miller's good. Definitely, definitely sad what happened with uh, with Mac. Uh, Amsterdam's often considered an easier city to drive because there's a lot less traffic, even the routes, uh, even if the routes are less direct than uh, a North American city. So that's interesting. I, I've, I've wondered about that. So I went to a, a conference a while back with some planners from Amsterdam I was really there to talk about or to listen and learn about Woonerfs. That was the main concern uh, that I had. <laughs> um, but they 
they basically said because of all the chicanes, which is basically like a jog in the road, and the culture of driving slowly because everyone's mixing, it wasn't that bad. And that's that's the big thing that I think we have to try to get past in the U.S. is just getting that mindset where people are okay um, going slower. I mean, that's that's it shouldn't it it shouldn't be a difficult ask, but it it really is. Um, how do you lay the roads while having have having the map look like this? Mine just so I'm using the uh, it's called I keep uh, Legacy Flavor. It's a mod, so I'm using the Thunderstore, and I know that not everyone is comfortable modding right now, and I totally respect that. However. Because of Timberborn, I've I've had I had the Thunderstore on my computer already. I know that it's a reputable source to get mods, and I'm okay uh, personally accepting the risk of modding right now. Um, and I'm doing so, and and uh, I'm trying to do so in as measured a way as possible. So basically, I want to get mods that are going to enhance the visuals, but not change the gameplay. If that makes any sense, so. I guess that's how I'm able to make it look like this. So if you have that mod, it's shift W. So this is the, the default crazy view. And then you've got to turn off this and hit I so that it looks normal. But with this mod, it has this view right here as the default. And then it also has colorblind modes. So if you happen to be colorblind and uh, need to be able to see the, the zoning in a different color, I want to say it's shift Z or alt Z or something z uh you can change it so that basically all the colors are just a little bit different so this in my opinion is functionality that should have been with that should have come with the game uh it was some of the first feedback that i gave uh, about the game is that i just i really despise the uh the the, the mode that we have where it's it's all white it, it, i just don't understand like is there anyone that sees this and says this is my preferred way of viewing this this is the first thing I want to see. Uh, maybe the residential suitability, but the ground pollution, which is what really dominates this, is no good. And I'd be fine seeing the residential suitability with this, which I can't do right now. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that, yeah. The white's the worst. It's flashing at you constantly. I I would I would hate to be someone who uh, you know. Imagine if you were an epileptic. And you were dealing with that constant flash. I don't know if you could play the game right now as it currently sits. So from from my perspective, it's really an accessibility concern. And I don't really understand why the game does that, why, why it's like this. So yeah, the colorblind options are huge. In my, I mean, it's it's 2023, almost 2024. We, like, in my opinion, that's kind of an expectation that we get a colorblind mode. So it was very surprising me that it's not in here. Hopefully it gets added. It's another thing that I mentioned. Uh, it wasn't, I will, you know, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I just don't understand. Um, have I picked up the tree DJ? Did I pick up the tree line tool, uh, tree line tool mod yet? Ducks in a row. I did. And, uh, it, it's, it's got a lot of promise. I don't think it's there yet. So I actually, just before the stream removed it because so basically, if you have it in right now and you go to place a tree, first of all, you have to listen to a sound, um, which I think is really distracting and difficult for me while I'm recording, but whatever, that's neither here nor there. But it doesn't seem to trigger consistently and then the trees don't space consistently all the time. So the net result of that is that I just couldn't seem to figure out when it was actually working or not. So yeah, ducks in a row needs work. It's messy, but it's 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 got it's got a lot of promise there. Uh, the interesting thing about all the mods, and I'm, I'm curious about this, um, a lot of the mods don't have a UI, so I don't I don't really know what's going on with that. So, yeah, cheers. Hey hey guy, bud, how you doing? What are you drinking tonight? Uh, you'd love to see an accurate water system in Magnolia County, as the uh, water as a water distribution engineer. I should do that. I should. 
Uh, in San Francisco, you should build BART and Muni. Yes. Uh, what does the UI stand uh, stand for, please? What U UI stands for user interface. Uh, Batch, we're drinking a Shiner Holiday Cheer. Well, I'm glad you're here, Batch. Ah, and all we had to do was sit here for a while and we unlock a signature building. I'm drinking, it's it's called a Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale. A Kentucky Ale from Bourbon Barrel. Bourbon Barrel Brewing, I'm guessing? Kentucky Ale? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, so it's an ale that was aged in bourbon br barrels and um, it's delicious. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So... This is one of the interesting things right now. We've got all of this off the chain commercial demand. None of, none of these guys actually are getting any, any use. So I'm going to say that we just need more density near here, uh, but we're not doing that right now. We're going low density. So we're going to say goodbye to all this stuff. And maybe that will help out the few that we have. Oh, uh, let's see. This stuff is a real deal. I agree. Uh, fellow Wisconsinite here. It's all about the about the uh, Pentiums. Love it. <laughs> uh, good to see that I'm streaming on Twitch now. I'm happy to be on Twitch. Uh, it's it's a different chat culture, and I, I, I appreciate that. You know, it, I do feel uh, conflicted because uh, right now, so I haven't looked at the number of people that are here, but there's 509 on Twitch, and I see you guys on YouTube. There's a uh, 1,615 of you guys. And I, I appreciate all of you. The main reason why I'm chatting right now on Twitch is that the, the chat tools are a little bit easier. So um, it's a great place to lurk, though. It's a great place to uh, to chill out. And uh, I appreciate you all being there. It's also going to be on VOD because of that, too. So let's see. As a side note, there's UX, which is user experience. UI tends to uh, focus more on the look interactivity and feel of a given screen or page and ux covers the overall user experience of the product that's good info <laughs> am i a new urbanism boy i am love it i yeah big big on new urbanism i think uh i think if we're going to design new neighborhoods we should be thinking about things that have been successful in the past and that's really what new urbanism is about um, speaking of chat functionality, fellow Wisconsinite, just joined Twitch for the channel. Love that. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining, signing up to Twitch for that. That's awesome. Uh, your Twitch is not frozen. I'm just not moving. I'm just chatting and drinking beer. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to zone a bit. I think that we need more industrial and I don't love how separated everything is i've got an idea i've seen in the chat or in the comments a number of times uh, on youtube that having industrial mixed with some residential is it works in city skylines too which is great because it actually works in reality too to a slight extent in some areas there are actually there's actually a neighborhood in milwaukee uh where they are experimenting with some of that where you have some light industrial with residential mixed into it. And it makes a lot of sense. It's an employment use. If it's not actively polluting, it should work. But if we have smaller buildings, smaller industrial buildings, we should be able to have some residential close-ish by. So kind of interested in that. Uh, Nico Blazewind, interested in my opinions of Canadian cities and how they're designed. Um, you know, Canadian cities have a lot of the same DNA that American cities, the North, that, that, sorry, that's not the right way of putting it. You guys are American too. Uh, Canadian cities have a lot of the same DNA as U.S. cities. So, so I, think, I find that some of them are, are almost indistinguishable in terms of design and sensibility. Um, you know, I think that one of the things that separates Canadian cities is it seems that there's a, there's more of an embrace of transit in some of the cities than comparable cities of the same size in the US. And I wish that we were a little bit better about that. Um, also more of an embrace of density, uh, even in, you know, I mean, we just don't, we don't embrace it in the same way here. Um, but the affordability, man, like I just, I follow the affordability of Canada 
as as almost a morbid curiosity at this point because it's wild how unaffordable things are getting there. And I really hope that, you know, I know that Canada is making some moves to attempt to resolve some of that. Um, you know, things like restricting foreign nationals from purchasing properties or things of that nature. And, you know, something's got to be done to keep things in check because it's crazy. Like the way the way it is, it, like, I mean, I've known a lot of Canadians that moved to the U.S. And I just, I would hate for that to be something that people feel that they're forced to do because of affordability. Not that it's any better here. I mean, I live in Madison and, you know, I'm, I've mentioned that we moved uh, at the start of the year and we would not have been able to buy a new house if we wouldn't have already owned a house, which isn't right. I mean, that's not right, <laughs> but that's that is the world that we are currently living in. And I think it's like that in um, in a lot of other places too. Canada being one of those. Housing affordability is, is terrible in Australia. Yeah, I've, I've heard about Australia and the unique ways that people have to buy property there generally. Um, I mean, is it, isn't it true that in Australia, there's like a bunch of, basically it's like an auction to buy a house. So you like show up to the front and do this unique auction thing to get to, to, to actually get the property. Terrible in New Zealand too. Yes. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's terrible. I mean, I can't imagine it. UK is bad too. Yeah, that's that's the norm in Melbourne. I just can't imagine needing to go up there and make what is most likely your largest and most expensive purchase while actively bidding against people whose dreams you are crushing <laughs> by by by, uh, by bidding on the property and, and and hopefully winning it. Obviously, that's crazy. Um, One million for a house where you live, Diana. Diana, thank you for being here. Uh, wow, yeah. I mean, so Madison's not that bad yet. But as a result, we're seeing a lot of people moving here. Um, and the thing that stinks is I feel like there's a whole subset of people moving here looking for affordability that are finding something affordable now uh, only to, I mean, let's just be honest. The more people that move here, we are replacing homes. So in my area, it's a it's a clip of about 10% less per year than we actually need. The 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 free market is producing. So that is a, a significant deficit. And it's not getting better. Every year it gets worse. And the more people that move here to escape, you know, the high cost of housing in places like Austin or San Francisco, those are common places I hear. People moving here, they're like, ah, oh, it's like, you know, it's like Berkeley. So we'll just go here. It's got a university and, you know, the vibe's similar. Uh, so we'll go to Madison and now it's just as expensive here. Um, yeah, it stinks. DC, I, I had a friend in, uh, from grad school move to DC, said this exact same thing. Then you pay $16.50 a month for, to rent a studio that's rent controlled and cheap. That is wild. So my mortgage isn't much more than that and i mean that's it's wild that is that is that is nuts when i lived in la so i had a one bedroom for 12 12 50 but it was in the valley and then i had a uh i had a studio near santa monica and i rented it from a lady that was a little older and she just wanted people that she could trust and i don't know why she picked me because at the time i was just kind of a kind of a train wreck but she trusted me and as a result i got it for the uh i got a studio apartment 600 square feet um about a mile from the ocean for 800 bucks a month which i get it like that was like 2010 it's a while ago but should have never been that cheap. It was to the point that um, I went on this website, I think it's called Westside Rentals or something, and I assumed that it was a scam, but I was so desperate that I was willing to give anything a shot. And then I met this 
it's a nice lady who was who was just like I just want I just want good people in my units. Uh, Dashley Daniel, you lived in Madison for the past two years for grad school. How's rent been for you, Daniel? Uh, I assume it's been bad. That's something that has been just terrible. Like student housing in, in Madison, has been it's been tough. And Jim, yeah, it's been crazy how much. Uh, I mean, so a big part of it, you know, and I, I mean, obviously, I'm not a real estate expert. Um, but I do talk, or at least I have talked to a lot of real estate experts uh, over over the years. And I don't know how this resolves because there's a whole subset of people who have zero motivation or incentive to move. Um, if your interest rate, I mean, so put things in perspective, my original interest rate at my old house was 2.85% which is wild. I mean, when we bought our house, initially it was a 5% interest rate. And every, you know, basically every time the rate dropped a percent, uh, it seemed to be a good idea to, to give it another go and uh, refi. So we just kept doing it. And 2.85. So we got into our new house and we're back at 5.5. And that that was painful but now i look today and it's like eight percent eight percent interest like i mean my dad he told me that uh, for the house that i lived in as a kid his interest rate was 15 percent you know I mean that's the 80s so i guess that was okay at the time and i i remember telling him like i just can't imagine the interest rates ever getting that high and it feels eight percent feels bad i think it probably feels worse than his 15 because at least when he was buying a home they the prices weren't as elevated as they are now um yeah it's wild you bought your house at three percent right before the pandemic now it's time to renew soon oh no so wait 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 did you get an arm yeah you'll keep your you'll keep your 3.2 percent uh of the novice gamer so that's the thing so there's a whole group of people who have no incentive to move. And I get it. I, the only reason I moved is basically the pandemic made me realize how much time I was going to be spending working at home. And, uh, there was, we happened to be walking in our neighborhood. I didn't move very far. I moved four blocks. <laughs> and we found the perfect the perfect house and we're like should we like we're gonna whatever we buy now my my goal is to never move again so uh we pulled the trigger and we'll just we'll deal with the the higher interest rate and it's not i mean it's not eight it's not 15. yeah huge move <laughs> So here's the thing. I've never used a mover to move. Um, but this time, because it was such a huge move, we uh, we decided, you know what? We're doing it. We're going to hire movers and they'll move everything a couple of blocks. And it made me realize what a terrible pack rat I've become. Because they estimated, they're like, yeah, we, we'll get two guys and it will take them... I don't know, four hours, it'll, it'll be fine. And it took three guys all day and it was January because I'm crazy. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was luckily a very nice day in January, but still a day in January moving, not, not fun. I probably could, I, I can't. So the most uncomfortable thing is I routinely see my old neighbors and we have all of these different events in my neighborhood. Um, and at one point 
one of them stopped me and said, Hey, do you just like come back and visit? And I was like, no, no, just, just move four blocks. <laughs> and we had been contemplating all sorts of different places and we just love our neighborhood so much. And I think that that, like, if you can find a place that feels like home and you know, your whole family agrees to it, then might as well stick there. Madison's great. I agree. Hello from Janesville. Janesville's a nice city too. We, uh, so Janesville is actually talking with this. Uh, do you guys have your lights up yet? I guess at the, is it the botanical gardens that you guys have some sort of holiday light display? And I haven't been to Janesville in a long time, but my wife insists that we, we go for the lights. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. Brooklyn. Love it. I should make, I should, in, uh, should, I should use Brooklyn for some, in, for some inspiration. <laughs> what are y'all talking about? Uh, we're, we are currently taught. We, so we were talking about interest rates and the housing crisis. Maybe that's, we'll get back to that. So ultimately a lot of these places it's, there's a mismatch. Please see a great little town. It is a great little town. Um, was Paul Ryan still speaker the last time he went to Janesville? Uh, probably before then. Um, so I went to a conference in Janesville near the Steak and Shake and spent time in Beloit. It was, uh, it was an interesting time. <laughs> it was, uh, I was at the Holiday Inn, um, a million years ago <clears throat> when I worked at the uh, Department of Transportation I uh, basically we, we would have these WISDOT conferences and I went there have I been to the Mustard, Mustard Museum I have not although the Steak and Shake is now Ste Steak and Shake is now I hop that's a downgrade uh, yeah the Mustard Museum it's in Middleton it was in Mount Horeb and I still have not gone there so I went out I I, uh, I had dinner at a friend's house uh, a week ago and we were talking about that. He wants to go. So I'll have to ask him if he went and if he went and enjoyed his time, then I will, I will, I will go there as well. <laughs> I like mustard. I don't know. I mean, does mustard, does it really warrant a museum? I don't know. <laughs> Steak and Shake is a national treasure. I agree. Uh, what about the cheese palace cheese palace? So I'm going to, uh, is that, is that a West side thing? Am I, am I familiar with the broad spot? Um, you mean on state on state? I've, I've been to that one. <laughs> uh, unless mustard does not warrant a museum I agree hard to beat IHOP it's not hard to beat yeah I mean I think steak and shake is a chain too so it's not it's not like we set the bar super high um, but coming back from a conference which the Wistot conferences were always a riot they were I mean it's just it's a whole bunch of planners, engineers, and numbers people getting together and sitting through a conference for a while until we could all go let loose and have a couple drinks. And just, I shouldn't, I shouldn't admit that that was one of my favorite parts of working at Wistot were the conferences, but it, it was. Wistot was, it was, a, it was a, an interesting environment. Working at the Department of Transportation generally, you've got to You've got to really be okay with a kind of slow grind, which is fine, but it was, a, it was not my, my, not my style. Uh, so wait, where are you out of? I'm out of, I'm out of Madison, Wisconsin. Ah, I stream on Twitch. Honestly, in, in, indeed I do. This is my second time. Commiserating over drinks is a common, uh, yeah, conference experience matter. That's true. 
That's true. So that was that was always my my favorite part. And that was what I enjoyed about Janesville. <laughs> also, the, the downtown was interesting. It was interesting seeing. So Janesville, maybe I'll bring up a map in a minute after we get this done. I've, I've kind of messed a bit of this up, which is kind of the, the story of Newmarket. I've kind of missed, a, a, uh, uh, screwed a bit, a bit of this up is, maybe that's what it should. It's not Newmarket, now it's Tombstown. Gotta get that straight. Um, yeah, I've just kind of, screwed things up we just keep going um anyway let's see Shushi drake i hope you go with a slightly modded playthrough with magnolia once the mods come through especially quality of life i have a mod right now so we're we're currently using a mod that allows us to change the flashiness of this so right here we get the flash i can turn that off with a quick click so there'll be some slight mods but not not anything crazy as uh, lacrosse bluffside oktoberfest lacrosse is a great town i you know i saw this thing that said that lacrosse is actually shrinking uh as opposed to many other wisconsin towns of a similar size were not and i was kind of surprised to see that because of what a great town it is uh you're from you're from alcorn and janesville was the big city <laughs> Uh, the big city for me was Wassa. So, I, uh, I, I, I understand that experience. Go to the big city, get a mar, get, just get amazed. Got to go to the mall. Got to go to KB Toys when that was still a thing. That dates me. <laughs> Wassa, yes. Uh, have I been in New Glarus? I have. I actually stayed at an Airbnb in New Glarus a uh, year ago. Um, and then they have a really nice trail system. And I spent some time on the trail system. It's a great town. I have, the, the thing I haven't done, though, and this is probably blasphemy. I've never gone to the brewery. But that's, that's having kids for you. Makes it hard to go and, and drink at a brewery all day when you have kids. Uh, when I made my first city on City Sky for City Skylines 2 on YouTube, did you have any techniques uh, for following the master plan? Oh, yeah. So my techniques for Moundsville, basically, I busted out my scale ruler that I have not used forever. And I printed out John Nolan's master plan. Um, and I actually went along each road and I measured the distance and then converted it into meters. So there were no mods that could help me with it. So that was my solution. It's probably not the one that you're looking for, <laughs> but that's what I did. New Glarus Brewery visit uh, with a stop at the Sugar River Pizza. Oh boy. You're gonna bring up Sugar River Pizza. So I heard how great Sugar River Pizza is. And let me tell you, the pizza was very good. But I was there on the 4th. Was it the 4th of July? When was it? Memorial Day? It was It was. It was on a holiday. And it was the most excruciating wait. And I had two young kids with, and they were freaking out. So uh, it, it tainted my Sugar River Pizza experience. I hope to go back at some point and have a better time. But I definitely had a bad time. <laughs> Pizza was delicious though. It was just, it was a crazy wait. Um, the fact that we've gone an hour without Google Maps story makes me, uh, you know what, Vic, we're gonna, we'll do it. You know what? We'll do one right now. Let's see. We got all these pictures I can't show you. These are the builds. Um, why don't I show you New Glarus? We'll zoom right in. I'll show you where it is. So this is New Glarus. It's a small town. It is very cute. Madison is not far away. So basically, there's Madison. There's the Isthmus. You come down, and it feels like a different world. This is Monroe County. And I'm still... It's really hard to go back and forth <laughs> between Google Earth. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm over here sitting the... Uh, uh, 
AS ASWD keys trying to move around here and it, it, oh, it does work. It does. What am I doing wrong? Uh, anyway. So yeah, here is, let me find the downtown. It's something special. So there's a trail back here. Sugar river, I believe is right here. So I spent a ton of time right here, but the thing that's special about new Glarus is they are very proudly Swiss. So you see the Swiss flag all over the place and they have architecture that mirrors Switzerland. And in the summer on a nice summer day, this place is just bustling. Just people walking all over the place. Um, this looks like a pretty sleepy day right now, but it's, it's nice. There's an ice cream shop right here that I've gone to. Uh, and when I stayed here, we were out in the middle of nowhere. Let me think. So we drove past a winery which I believe was right here on, what is this, 39? And then I want to say we were somewhere like way out here on a farm. And it was just an excellent experience, just a, a nice place to for the kids to see animals and just kind of experience uh, something a little bit slower than Madison. So it was good. It was really good. But anyway... Yes, Jesus, those, those parking spots are huge. Yeah, so that would be the, the, the bit of feedback. This, so this is something that was has been critiqued a lot in Magnolia County, is that I've gone hard on parking. But this is small town America. Um, first of all, large vehicles. <laughs> and then you just, you, there's a lot of pavement, a lot of parking. And parking, especially free parking, is considered just gold. If you don't have it, like just people, people will complain that they can't find a parking spot. I mean, this is the kind of place that I, mean, I grew up in a, in a in a fairly small town, and then I moved to a different small town, even smaller. And you know, public parking and things of that nature. If you don't have it, your place will die because people are not going there. <laughs> so um, that is why I added as many parking spots as I did um, to Magnolia County. And the idea, so my idea is basically that parking, and this is not great, but it's, I've worked on projects where the developer has said something along the lines of, well, we're gonna pave it for now because we're already paying taxes on this parcel. So we might as well have the parking for overflow just in case. And you know, if we don't wanna use it, we just won't plow it in the winter. Uh, but at least it's usable. And then in the future, we have this land that we can expand on, you know, for whatever our principal use is. So that's my idea in Magnolia County is that we're going to have all this parking that's reserved. Um, we'll likely take out buildings in downtown Bend and in whatever other communities we create uh, in, for parking. And then over time, we'll redevelop and try to have sort of a, a natural a change like that. Uh, favorite brewery in Madison. I feel like I have to say, I feel like I have to say the Great Dane because of how many times I've been there. <laughs> um, but I mean, I love a fantasy factory that if that helps. And I also, I mean, I have a, uh, Caribbean four Midwesty Pilsner in front of me. I was choosing between the Kentucky bourbon barrel and that one. And I decided to go with the Kentucky bourbon barrel. But anyway, yeah. Can I show you a project that I've worked on in real life? Ugh. So if I tell you the project, you'll know who I am. It's not hard to find me. I worked on a lot of projects in the Madison area. A lot of transportation stuff. So that, that, that'll be my hint. I worked on transportation stuff. I've also worked on a lot of non-transportation stuff. Uh, it was a nice reprieve, actually, being able to work on something that wasn't transportation. I really enjoyed it. I spent a couple of years um, just doing some suburban stuff. And the interesting thing about it, and if there are you know, other planners in here, I'm sure that they will also say the same thing. When you work in a smaller community, everything feels very personal. And you end up working with people on very personal things to them, and which I really appreciated. So I worked on 
things as small as you know sheds and you get to see someone make you make someone's day i also worked in very large projects that made me kind of uh uh um what's the best way to put it i was not viewed as a as a you know i was viewed as someone who um i was part of the regulatory machine you know which is fine the, the thing that people didn't realize is that like sometimes you have to do things as part of a bureaucracy that maybe you don't agree with maybe you do and but ultimately like as a planner you're giving guidance about best practices and then implementing policies that elected officials the people who you know you as a as a resident of a city have sent to to make decisions so um yeah the transportation projects were definitely more adversarial let's say so yeah so let's see you didn't know that row row Ro robert you didn't know that i streamed yes uh and i get nothing done and the system yes i was the system i was the man uh, a very a very not powerful man but i was the man uh, and now that I'm doing this, there's a very real potential that at some point I will exact my revenge and be a decision maker at some point. That would be that would be a dream of mine is to, to actually be able to influence the process in that way. Not necessarily as like an elected official, but in your community, if you want to have any sort of involvement without being an elected official, You'd be surprised just how many committees there are that you could take part in that are completely appointed positions um, that if you just showed interest, you'd probably get it. <laughs> so it's pretty wild. You should definitely, if you have any interest in it, you should. Running for mayor? No way. <laughs> um, you know, Madison is not a huge city, but it's a big enough city that it is, it's, you know, it's politics, man. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to be in the level of politics. I mean, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be in that level of politics. There's a, there's definitely, it's a different ball game. Merci, PP. <laughs> Night all, peace out from Brazil. Thank you for being here, Slug. Appreciate you. CPP for president, no way. <laughs> for president, I just hope, man, I just hope we, I just hope it's chill. Madison is politics 101. It really is. Um, yeah, it's, 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 there's a lot of, so that's the thing, you know, this has been a, a funny one for me. I see this all the time, at least and that maybe not so much anymore, but I used to see a lot on the channel. Uh, you're talking about politics. I don't want to talk about politics. And the funny thing is planning is political. Uh, everything about it's political. So if you've ever thought, ah, you know, maybe planning is for me. The one thing I would caution you on or ask you a question about is how do you feel about working in politics? Because even in a, in a small little rural community, you're going to be dealing with local politics and it's going to be different than you imagine. It's not to say it's bad. It's just it is what it is. Yeah, imagine a world where city planning isn't political. I mean, there'd be a lot of good decisions that get made. <laughs> Not to say that politicians aren't great at times. That some really dedicated people are the reasons why things get done. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, like politics. Politics can really muck up a lot of stuff too. Which I don't think, I mean, I think that any of us know that no matter where you're at in the world at this point in time. So, and local politics is the funniest politics because people will, everyone treats it a little bit differently. Um, I mean, there were officials that had the very best of intentions that were doing all of the very worst things for the community uh, based on trying to help an individual person. And the number of times that, you know, especially when you work in a smaller town, you've got to sit down and kind of go through and talk with elected officials and say, listen, here's why we do X, Y, and Z. Um, it's not just that, you know, it's part of the plan. It's actually that we're thinking about things 
30 years in the future and that person who's going to leave is going to influence decision making for that entire neighborhood and the person who's going to live here 30 years down the line who now doesn't have a sidewalk because that person complained or whatnot now maybe i'm going on a diatribe of things that bother me <laughs> uh at worst politics is partisan bickering for well violence at its best it's trusted leadership make uh trusted leadership making uh considered executive decisions for a varied constituency yes so politics is good and bad i think local politics local politics is the best politics uh it's the most interesting in my mind it has the most direct impact on your lives and it fascinates me to no end that more people aren't more interested in their local politics because it's these it's these people that you know people that you see at the grocery store that are helping to make decisions about the way your city looks feels uh and the way that you interact with it and people are so fixated on you know this this you know the federal politics or state politics and don't get me wrong it's all important stuff um but the local stuff is the stuff that that impacts you and whether or not your local person agrees with a federal person doesn't matter what matters is what they want to do in your city and you should ask them because most of them are incredibly accessible so go up to them at the grocery store and ask them about things most of them like to like to talk talk to you about it gazer you think local politics is boring you think knowing what's happening in your community is boring i disagree with that i think that meetings can be boring but the general the general uh knowing what's happening in your community is not boring you got to know what's happening in your community yeah, Mikado, you're you're exactly right. Your vote is more impactful locally. Your mother has her job because she won by two votes. That is wild. That is that is true. And I agree. Think globally, act locally. Yeah. So, I look at I look at local politics, and it's really more of like small things that have a big impact on people's everyday. So to me, I, that's, that's what I, 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 I'm the weirdo that looks at that stuff and will ask questions. And I encourage other people to do the same. Um, Dakota, not Dakota, not strain. Actually, I said this on YouTube, but anyways, do you ever feel sad or bad that more and more of our land is being turned into cookie cutter subdivisions? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yes and no. I mean, just reasonably, we have a huge housing shortage and something's got to be done to resolve it. Um, I think that's a really tough one. Because, you know, in my area, for instance, there's one developer that's building basically everything. So they are going to build what is profitable and makes sense for them. And that's what they've been doing. And I might not, not like it, but I would really hate it if they stopped building things because we are growing. Um, at least because it's one point of contact you can get them to change what they're doing to a certain extent and hopefully improve their design over time. Um, do I wish that they, they were more, there were more options and things of that nature? Yeah. Um, more density. Sure. But at the same time, like it's tough. It's a, it's a tough one. I think that the real problem is a lack of creativity in some of the designs and uh, a, an unwillingness to build things that people actually, what I think would actually be good for people, you know, smaller homes. I was, maybe this is something we'll look up. I'm curious about this. Um, average cost or average size of a home of a new built home in the U S. I mean, this is obscene. So this chart, I've looked at this. So it, it's it's declining now, but this is home unaffordability and cookie cutter subdivisions in a nutshell. So right now, to, last year, 
The average size of a new build home. Average. Average. 2,522 square feet. And this would not be including finished basements or things of that nature. That is just the home itself. And that is massive. And the result of this is unaffordability and homes that are really squished together in cookie cutter subdivisions um, because the lots haven't really changed in some cases, um, but the houses have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And here's 1975 and we're looking at damn near a thousand square feet smaller. And it's not that our families have gotten bigger, they've actually gotten smaller. So it's just that we have uh, bigger and bigger homes for smaller and smaller families, and that makes it more and more unaffordable. Um, but it's really difficult to get a developer to change their mindset, um, especially when they know that they know that they build this house right here, and it will sell, and they'll get their profit, and it'll be it'll be uh, predictable. So yeah. Dakota, I hope that was a good answer. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the switch. I felt like we moved into a mansion. We bought our first house at 1,500 square feet. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's definitely. I did say, I said, damn. So I apologize, Vic. I will watch my mouth. <laughs> um, so one of the nice things about some of, so I, going back to the topic of new urbanism, which was discussed a little bit ago, um, one of the things that I appreciate about that is that there's at least generally the idea is to have a variety of, of different housing options within a neighborhood. So you would have not just 2,522 square foot uh, you know, homes, but also apartments and then some townhomes and condos and maybe even elderly housing um, and within the el housing for elderly. So you have 55 plus um, uh, apartments and then maybe a, kind of a continuum of care so that you could age in your neighborhood. Um, so yeah, I think that that would be really, I think that if we could get that, that's probably a win. But yeah, I, I wish we would do something. The size is more of a concern to, to me and the overall finish than the then the, the um the cookie cutterness um and then the, the layout is i mean that definitely can stink as well but yeah um what is my opinion of people and corporations buying housing on vacation rentals oh boy i've dealt with ordinances i helped write an ordinance about this uh i think so I think it's both bad and a scapegoat. Um, so I think, so here's, here's my spicy take. I think that in places that have made it really difficult to build things, uh, it becomes very easy to blame Airbnb for housing prices. So that's my super spicy take. Yeah, it makes it worse. It's there's there's no lie. There's, there's no there's no denying that taking an apartment off the market and turning it into a vacation rental. I mean, I went to I went to LA to visit it a few years back and we had an Airbnb and I didn't realize it was an apartment not too far from the one I lived and it had people living in it. That is absolutely making housing more expensive in that area. So that is not a good thing. But the real thing that's making it bad is that it can be really, really difficult to build new housing. And there are a variety of reasons for this, but the biggest one, I think you all know it, it's NIMBYism. It's that the people who have housing wanna protect their property values, which I get, um, but they're willing to do so at the expense of anyone else who wants to buy a house, uh, who wants to live in a neighborhood. It's not even just buying, it's, it's something, in some cases it's just, you wanna live in a place and you can't afford to do it because uh, someone is deciding that they think that apartments are going to destroy their entire block. So as a result, they're going to, you know, basically lobby against any apartment that is proposed. Um, and again, now I'm going into some personal traumas. <laughs> so I apologize. That is, that is certainly apartments in and of themselves have been something that I've, I've 
had a lot of painful discussions about. So yeah. Um, I don't find Airbnb a bargain anymore. Oh yeah, on a personal level, I think Airbnb stinks. I think that um, the, my problem with Airbnb, so you get to, you get to see a lot of really cool places. So I went uh, to a cabin. I was it Silver Lake in Wapaka a few years back, and stayed at a super cool cabin. Never had to buy a cabin. I don't own a cabin, but I'd like to visit them. And Airbnb facilitated that. So that's super cool. That is a cabin that is going to be a cabin no matter what. And I got to experience the cabin. So that is the very best of Airbnb. But also, I got to do the laundry and do all this other stuff that's just like, really, this is part of my experience. This, this stinks. I shouldn't have to do all this stuff. I shouldn't have to. And that's, that's I think, my, for me, that's what I don't like about Airbnb. I, I don't understand why we've all accepted all of these fees and um, all the work that we have to do <laughs> just to just to just to go on vacation. Just thanks. Just like any other short-term rental, yeah. But I just I think I think if I go on vacation, I should be able to just like kind of hang out and afterwards not make the bed or like wash the sheets. It's just it's like I don't understand why. I have to do that. <laughs> so the end king, I read that wrong and I thought you were I thought you were saying something very very mean to me. <laughs> Full-time potato, I agree. I'm a hotel guy. That said, I'm going to Arizona um in February and we have an Airbnb, so I'm a hypocrite. I didn't pick it out though. It's my wife. Greens from Hudson. It's a nice town. Um I just turned I just got turned super commercial. I just got turned super commercial. I'm missing what you're saying, uh, Miss Mary. Uh let's see. Oh, there's that chat about affiliate, me becoming an affiliate. I didn't realize it was only eight hours. <laughs> Honestly, um, I mean, I don't think we'll get there tonight, but um, and the last one was, oh, maybe we will. Is it eight hours in a month? Yeah. Ooh, there's that. There's a spicy talk about HOAs in the in the chat. So chat, how many of you guys have HOAs? I'm just, I'm curious. We can't, uh, full time potato, we can't have a sub -a No one can sub to me. I am, I am the lowest of the low on Twitch. <laughs> I am, I am unknown. Uh, no HOA, nope, never. I don't know, I'm Canadian. You, you guys don't have, you don't have some HOAs in Canada? Homeowners associations? So I will say they're very different in different places. So uh, in my area, oh, oh, DJ, HOA fees priced me out of a house a few years ago. That's ridiculous. HOAs have to die. Wait, no HOAs in Canada. You guys trying to get me to cross the border? <laughs> uh, so some HOAs are... Okay. Some HOAs are, are, are bad. Some are terrible. And almost none of them are good, in my opinion. Spicy takes again. Um, so I have an HOA. And it's, it's fine. Uh, the HOA basically doesn't do anything outside of, like, put lights on Christmas trees and pick up dog poop out of a couple of garbage bags, or gar gar garbages, sprinkle throughout the neighborhood. Um... So that is the least intrusive HOA. Ah, tiny town. Uh, we'll take a look at this. Least intrusive that an HOA could be. Uh, so I'm cool with that. Um, should we break the city by putting a post office in? <laughs> um, but some HOAs are just absolutely mad. And they will have um, just crazy authority 
Uh, mine has less authority, but we also have. Uh, so this is a this is a neighborhood. So I've, I've mentioned this. It's a new new urbanist style neighborhood, and um, we have an architectural control committee as a result. And I would say I've had more problems with that. And just the the fun conversations of, I'm a planner. I know your document better than you do. <laughs> Uh, when you get into a fight with them, it's been it's been maddening. Cause that's 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 been a legitimate conversation that I've had. Is we're talking about bushes now. I like bushes. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let me do what I want to do. Uh, HOAs though, in some places, basically have a uh, policing authority. Um, not 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 like they're not going to arrest you or something. But they basically, as with when. When you're a planner, you have the ability in some jurisdictions to you're considered a peace officer and you're able to issue citations and work with the police department. Uh, probably the least favorite thing that I've ever done is need to go and issue citations and things like that uh, for people not mowing their lawns or not uh, following a zoning code. And in some cases, needing to go with the police because you're afraid. <laughs> but, but some HOAs have that authority. And that is not good. Um, so yeah, they're they're NIMBY bull. Well, CPB is a cop. No, C peace officer back in the day. That was what that was what when I was doing zoning stuff. You had that. I don't. I don't. It's not. I wouldn't call it authority. I would call it terrible burdenous <laughs> responsibility <laughs> that a lot of people. Uh, that if there's any part of the job that I've ever had someone truly despise me for. It was that. And I got it. It wasn't fun. Um, tyrants. <laughs> um, what am I building with the little holes in the shoreline? Just uh, industrial look. Uh, and entering potato mode, it looks like every now and then. Um, yeah, I just wanted to seem as though uh, ships could go in here, loading docks and things of that nature. Do I have ADHD? No, I just am tired. <laughs> I slept very poorly last night. Most of the powers that the HOA have in the U.S. is given by municipal police in Can uh, given to municipal police in Canada. They are basically what you just described, but actual proven provincial officials. They can give tickets and warnings for small violations like parking code violations. Yeah. Yeah. You're in Halifax. That's how. They, yeah. So that's. Yeah. If some HOAs had that authority. Um, where I live, I haven't seen any HOAs with that. I think that what you more deal with is HOAs having the ability to put liens on property for not following restrictive covenants. And that was something that. Um, I mean, I've been in some of those discussions where someone buys a property. Um, when you buy a piece of property, you're going to get a list of documents that are super important. They're going to talk about the easements that you have. They're going to talk about restrictive covenants that you might be subject to. There might even be some pretty nefarious, terrible stuff in there. Like my first house uh, was redlined. I would not have been able to buy it, um, you know, back Back in the 50s, it would have been impossible. Um, but if you don't read it, you can find out that there are things that you're subject to that you might not agree with, that you might be very uncomfortable with. Um, and the number of times I ran into that where someone finds out that they're not allowed to do something on their property that maybe they really wanted to do. A common one um, was, you know, they wanted to add us, uh, they wanted to at a shed or something of that nature or uh, a, a more common one or becoming more common is beekeeping or chicken keeping uh, oftentimes an HOA will say you can't do it and then the person will go and do it remember one person got what, what appeared to be kind of a chicken palace and their HOA immediately came up and was like you got to take that down or we're putting a lien on your house and they came up to me as the city and they're like well what you know what what can you do to help i'm like nothing like that's a private matter i can't the hoa the hoa that's a contract that you signed with all of your neighbors 
saying that you would act in a particular way with your property and now you're not and i have you i have no authority i can't tell them that what they're doing is mean i can't tell them that they can't do that in some cases what their what their rules are are superseding the city's rules so you're stuck so moral of the story i know we talked about housing unaffordability if it becomes more affordable and you get excited and you have the opportunity to buy a house read the fine print because if you're subject to any of that stuff any restrictive covenants you can have restrictive covenants even if you don't have an hoa it can be in a, a, an old part of an hoa uh, you can end up in a spot where if your neighbor decides to enforce that man you're in a world of trouble and i the the most extreme example the two of them come to mind um one was someone decided to put an in-ground pool in and their hoa that was against the rules they got to take it out I, I don't I can't even venture to imagine how much that cost to put the pool in and mind you they went through the municipality they got all the proper zoning approvals they got licensed uh you know installers to do all the work and then the HOA found out and they said get that out of here um if they wouldn't have done that they put a lien on the house and you don't want it to I mean they can go even further if you if you haven't watched the John Oliver um, last week night um, HOA video. It's on YouTube. Check it out because um, the, the amount of power that they have can be wild in certain places. Florida being one of them where it's just like they basically privatized swaths of municipal government, which is an option, um, but there are some consequences. Yeah, it was really good. That was a really good one, Jim. Uh, last week tonight yeah it's it's wild so it's it's like a 20 20 25 minute episode on uh on hoas i, lo yeah, I love watching john oliver uh, the thing about john oliver is it's a comedy show but the amount of research they put into, into their topics um and they're kind of obscure topics half the time so i don't think hoas are on half half of people's radars when i saw that one i was like yes you're speaking to me man i love it I love it Oh, 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 banana. Thank you so much. Let's see. Dante, thank you so much for the super. Let me, let, well, I'm going to go through some super chats in just a moment. Um, let's finish up this thought and then I'll go through them. <laughs> he mixed it, mixed emotions about John Oliver. That's fine. Everyone can have different, different takes on different people. Love it. The episode about wrestling and healthcare. I got to watch that. All right, I am going to let me take a look at some super chats. Dante, thank you so much. Two super chats. What is a lien? A lien is basically when the HOA is able to go to court and say, you can't sell your house. We now have rights to your house and that is on your title to your property. Uh, so a lien, uh, Another example of a lien would be if you buy a car and you get a loan on it, or you buy a home and you get a loan on it, the bank or the mortgage holder will put a lien against that thing to make sure that they get paid. So that that's what a lien is. Uh, for your HOA to be able to do that until you remove something, they could prevent the sale of your home. They could prevent you from doing things to your home. And in super extreme cases, they could repossess your home, um, which is not something that I've ever seen but I've heard of some horror stories and John Oliver kind of went into some of those. So, um, terrifying stuff. Uh, Dante, again, you want this for console so bad. I want to tell you, I've heard a lot of console players, uh, very disappointed that they don't have access to this right now. Um, it's going to be for the best. You're going to have it. And the game is going to be so complete. So done looking so much better. It's worth the wait. I, I'm happy that I have access to it right now, but I'm also modding it to get the experience that I want. And I oftentimes, here's my dark secret. Uh, I have had dev mode on just to do this. No, I don't want the rain. Make the rain go away because it's absolutely obnoxious. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was really hoping to be able to tell everyone to go play on console if you want a very predictable experience because uh this isn't well known it's not really something i've publicized 
Uh, I worked on some of the trailer footage for uh, City Skylines Remastered. And to make all that footage, I took my mouse and keyboard, plugged it into my Xbox, and hooked my Xbox up to my monitor, uh, to my capture card. And it was a great experience. The only thing that stunk was the UI, the user interface, the thing I'm interacting with right now. And if that's exactly the same for console, being able to plug a mouse and keyboard in and have a consistent experience and know that all 400 and whatever tiles are going to be playable is going to be amazing. And you'll never have to deal with the blurry clouds. So or, or I, I shouldn't say that. I hope you don't have to deal with it. <laughs> I just hope your experience is really consistent because that's what I experienced on the remastered version. And it would have been really difficult for me to tell anyone not to not that that wasn't one of the very best versions of City Skylines if you wanted to be a vanilla player. So that's what I think is going to happen with console. And I think that you're going to get an absolutely amazing experience. Uh, great Tiger Games. Thank you for the super chat. Just wanted to say keep up the great videos. No HOA here in Tasmania, by the way. You're in Tasmania. That is amazing. Thank you for being here. I, this might be a good time for you. Might, maybe three, four in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate the super chat. Uh, Dakota Strain. Oh, thank you for the super chat. I, I answered your question already about the cookie cutter subdivisions, but I appreciate I appreciate you. Uh, a couple purchases too. The looks like some merch. So I appreciate that someone purchased something. Uh, Bike Lane Bobby. Verde Beach taught me so much. Uh, you brought out the lover of aesthetic as well as the as you brought out love for the aesthetic of a well-planned city in me. The vibes are immaculate, Phil. Thank you so much, Bike Lane Bobby. Appreciate the purchase. Uh, I'm going to zoom into something so we can get a get a, a view of something while we're doing this. We'll, uh, we'll bike around the Marquette family. And we'll probably see potato mode. Uh, let's see. Another one. Marcus T, thank you for the great videos. My wife, Noelle T, loves the fact that it's her name is the city. Being from Michigan, we love the references. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Love that. Oh, Nic your, your wife, Nicolay. Ha! Glad that she enjoys that. And I uh, appreciate the. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is a super chat. It's coming up as a purchase. I'm looking at stream elements. So I apologize. I'm a terrible streamer. And that is why. Uh, getting that wrong <laughs> we also have a number of new uh planners and i'm just gonna thank you all uh quickly mike frazier sean john joshua steven jeff aaron boatwright 20 times 20 months steven spencer hunter 33 miles anthony david j zachary cranky and thud green tree ethan uh, so many of you i really appreciate all the channel memberships and i apologize that videos have been uh so slow to the uh to the vimeo folder uh i hope to improve that at some point and i hope to improve potato mode too because this looks terrible so anyway thank you all for the uh, for, for the super chat for the support it means a lot to me back to twitch chat uh i have a lot of smoke and pollution my dude indeed we have an industrial city but we but more than that we have potato trees and terrible, terrible graphics. And hopefully they're, hopefully we can resolve it. The way that I know, first of all, I don't have auto save on, so I'm going to force one right now. Oh my goodness. We got away with one. <laughs> so for the graphics, I'll just switch the filter mode. And then change the MIP bias, and that normally will fix it. We'll see. Uh, Thin John, when, when do we start getting custom assets? Uh, what am I looking forward to the most? I want small footprint assets with ped stairs to go up and down an elevation. That would be really cool. Um, honestly, I really think that there's a lot of potential for steps. Like the pedestrian stairs, I'd really want to see that. Um, honestly... I really dislike a lot of the, the housing assets. So what I'm most looking forward to is just buildings that don't look like this. I mean, I don't know what this is, but I'll tell you what, it's not American. 
it looks like this almost looks like an RV. So like if you've ever been to like a, an RV park, um, but it's not an RV. It's not a trailer this because there are trailers um, and it looks like it's on cinder blocks and everyone has a satellite for, for TV, even though they're in the city. That's really it's really interesting. I think that they could have gone with more stuff like this, which almost looks Sears kit like. But then there's like some just real weird decisions here. Like, you know, why is the swing set in the front yard? Like, I'm a parent. I would never let my kids have. First of all, is that a merry-go-round? I think I've mentioned that as a kid, it's not a merry-go-round. It's something similar, though. I broke my collarbone on a merry-go-round and it ended up getting removed from a park uh, shortly thereafter. I, I let go and I hit a tree, broke my collarbone. And then uh, as it was almost done healing, I fell down some steps, had the exact same experience. So why that would be at a private residence, I don't really know. Why it would be near the road, I, I know even less. And why there is this much pavement is completely beyond me. Um, so I'm looking forward to assets that have setbacks that are more reasonable, that have less pavement, that have designs that are more practical. And that's probably what I'll be looking for the most. To me, that like in this, yeah. And you at least need a fenced in yard. I don't know. So that's the other thing. I think that there are way too many. I think there are way too many uh, uh, fenced in and, you know, landscaped in yards. So at first I really liked it. The problem with these assets is that if you want to do something rural, so let's say you just want one, uh, well, we have to go two or three, three deep. So let's say that we're in the middle of the country and we have one house. It's going to have a, it's going to have this crazy fence around it. I, I, I see that uh, Beast Wigglehausen has been invoked. Is he, is, is he here? <laughs> uh, ever see the blacklist? I have not. I see it. Caliport, best gas station ever. Are you talking about Quick Trip? Because I mean, that's that is the best. Uh, how do I feel about the visuals in City Skylines 2? I feel like it all looks gray and bland. Uh, so I think I could talk about this stuff now. Um, I mean, the types of feedback that I gave um, was about that. I, I what The feature that I really wanted um, that I don't think we're going to get without mods is I want the photo mode adjustments to be available in the game. It would completely negate the need for LUTs. So I would love, you know, like, let's say you want to live in a strange uh, wasteland. You can do that. Uh, but more practically, if you want to boost the saturation and have a more cartoony look or something that feels more um, just vivid and, and, and bright, I think I should be able to just set this and save it. And that's how it is. And we can't. So that's... I, I agree. The visuals are, they went with a realistic visual. Um, I don't know that it hits the mark. And I think that some of the colors are a little bit too gray. I know we live in a, a world of grays, um, but it, it is a game after all. You do want it to be pretty. And it, it, it just, it, it hits some weird marks. So number one, it's grayish. It's not, it's not vibrant. There's no aging, so the buildings are always brand new. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of weird stuff. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing stuff like that resolved. Uh, Nerd Knight, thank you so much for the super chat. I found your channel for City Skylines 2 Beginner's Guide. I've absolutely fallen in love, been following ever since. I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate your content. Keep it up. I appreciate you, Nerd Knight. Thank you so much for the generous super chat. It means a lot to me. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Casey's are not good. Uh, they opened up Casey's in Madison. I've been there. I got quick trip. I don't need to go to Casey's. Look at all of this crazy parking need. So the townhomes don't have parking. That is bonkers. So I wonder. We make some money with parking. And maybe we need to do that. Casey haters. 
Yeah, lots of street parking. Um, one of the things that I really love about City Skylines too, I don't know if I have it unlocked right here. Yeah, so I love that we can just say one side of the street gets street trees or terraces. It's interesting. People have asked how I feel about this, that you have to make these decisions and trade-offs about right-of-way. And obviously it's a little bit too stark in City Skylines too. It was very binary. You get either trees or car and it's not like that. Uh, but I appreciate that it forces you to make some decisions and think about things. Um, that said, I do wonder, so I do this, do I need a parking lot now? Like, should I add one back here? And if so, I will have to unlock that. So why don't we, there's a couple of things I want to unlock first parking areas, second trains. Uh, trains because I want to bring trains into our industrial area. I'm um, very curious. There's been a lot said about whether or not trains work um, properly. If you've watched Magnolia County, the last one, um, you'll have seen that it did work for me once. And I don't know if that's like a, a normal thing or not. Oh, uh, you want a full view of the city? It's not much to look at right now. That's what we have. It's a bunch of disjointed pieces. Uh, Jim, it feels like cargo trains aren't working. Yeah. So I was noticing that things were importing, but nothing was exporting. And then it exported one time and I had to look at the tracks. So it was really interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll just show you. So the rail yard, I had issues with that. So let's just... I wonder where the best place for this is. So I, I got, I, there were some folks in the comments that said that I shouldn't have the rail yard on the main line, that it should be kind of off a spur. And I had, I've always been doing that. I guess, what do you guys normally do? Do I have any elder care places? We don't have that in city skylines too, do we? Have I read Madison, a model city? Uh, excerpts of it, not the whole thing. The cargo trains as bad as mail right now. I don't think it's that bad, but it's, it's, it's not working right. Uh, Hey guy, bud mainline. I know nothing about rail. <laughs> you think that you think the yards are normally a spur gazer? Okay. I think I could bite on that. Huh. Yeah. So <clears throat> what I think we'll do, maybe we'll put it somewhere along the coast right here. We'll just keep buying tiles. And I feel bad because there's all this intricate work right here that I'm going to absolutely savage because I can't build a bridge over it. Um, but I feel like if we're going to do this, we should just link right up right here. Oh, I can get a bridge across now. Um, so yeah, I think I'll put it over here and then we'll try to link back up. You miss Lane Man? Diana's in here, or at least she was. Can I place a big fire station? Uh, airport. I will place a big fire station after. Sure, I will do that. Uh, City Plan Place, have you heard about the Rethink 794 movement in Milwaukee to remove? Yeah, I have. Uh, I am super supportive. I saw the renders and just, it's, it's kind of mind blowing when you see the amount of space that a highway can take up. And the, the interesting thing about highways, I mean, obviously if, if you live in Waukesha, oh, dang it. So it took this and screwed it up. We'll try to fix that. Uh, so obviously that uh, the highway is, is the Department of Transportation's. They can do what they want. And their, their priority is regional transportation. Uh, but for a city, if you can reclaim 
that kind of land in the most some of the most valuable parts of your community where people want to live i mean that's huge absolutely huge let's see if i can just upgrade this and make it oh it's not gonna let me hopefully i don't break more of it the the key wall mechanic it's not my favorite oh you know what i've never used it in here but i could I don't know how. And I know that I can really screw things up in here. Um, huh. Should I take chances and try to use this? Probably shouldn't. Do it, do it, find it, do it. <laughs> how do I do it? Quick save. Okay, okay. Yeah, I should. I'll get the auto save. What is my auto save set to? Let's double check. If it's set to, I'm gonna set it to like three minutes as I go through and I break everything. Uh, general auto save. You know what? We'll leave it. We'll leave it to ten. I'll force an auto save right now, and we'll mess around. And if it crashes, it crashes and we'll figure it out so let's see what all this stuff does because i really don't want to uh do the whole wall step thing so wow there's a lot of stuff going on here i don't know anything that i'm looking at <laughs> f5 uh speech services <laughs> function f5 so the problem is i have uh so with my dual pc setup i use a program called what is it called mouse mouse without borders and it screws up some things and i find that the function keys are one of those things from time to time so i'll end up actually pressing it on this machine and it'll work for my other one almost nothing else has issues but function keys are one of those things and I, I I wonder about that. We're gonna just one more <laughs> pineapple pizza. I appreciate that that you, that you like the uploads. Um, go to simulation. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Vic had it. Now chat's moving. Go to simulation. Oh, this wasn't Vic. Let's see who was it. Donut monger. Simulation validation disable. Okay. Bypass validation results. Donut, I'm all about you right now. Donut pizza, is that, is that what it was? Donut pizza? Donut monger, donut monger. We'll just try that one. Whatever, we'll see what happens. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll get rid of this. Now I can do whatever I want. Now I have anarchy. Oh, it's going to be really... So this is dangerous because now I'm not going to want to go back. Look what you guys have done to me. Now I'm now I'm doing all these things that I wasn't doing before. But still, it's still not working. So maybe it doesn't... Oh, okay. Maybe if I just do this. No. Okay. Attempt two. We'll get rid of that. We'll redraw this in. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Simulation. We're going to turn this off because I'm going to break something. Uh, Bypass. Valid that. that was... Okay, chat. That was super gratifying. Thank you. Thank you for telling me to do it. It's technically still vanilla. It's not a mod. So that's uh, that's been something that's kind of got to me is I've noticed a lot of people saying that the dev menu is a mod it is not this is functionality that the de de developers have decided that you can't have and we're just taking back what uh what we what we should have <laughs> like turning off the weather <laughs> uh let's see where is that now I'm now I'm missing it 
bypass validation results. All right. Now we're right back where we were. Everything is fine, except that our zoning is all messed up. All right. Thank you guys. I, that was, that was good. That was really good. Feel good about that. I think it was the right choice. Just like that is come back with three units, a three by a two by three. Um, eat the devs. <laughs> uh, tater tot hot dish slaps for sure. The best thing is you can freeze it. Anyone who says otherwise about tater tot hot dishes, well, they're just wrong. So I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about them. Um, yeah, dev mode isn't a mod. It's the dev tools, like an elder scrolls scroll scrolls. It's there for you to touch. So I don't really know. And maybe one of you guys knows the story. How did we all learn about dev tools? Was it in the, one of the developer diaries they inadvertently showed how to get in there? Exactly. How did this happen? Because all of a sudden one day everyone's like dev tools, just got to use them. They're right. They're right there. You might as well use them. So we are going to oh, do some or do some nasty things to this because I don't know that we can get away with not unless we maybe if we I wonder we'll just change the track I'll change the road I'm getting too stuck on the road the road doesn't matter what matters is the track so we'll do this Ooh, I don't know what that is that's not my music we're not doing that. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I'm not getting uh, getting some uh, getting yelled at on on YouTube. I might have just demonetized the whole thing. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Jordan Collins, thank you so much for the super chat. Kind of late. Was that a and d night with friends? Don't know if you've answered this, but what's the plan for Magnolia County? The map editor breaks it. Really love that series. Always great work, CPP. Oh, that is an excellent question, Jordan. So I was actually talking with, with folks about this. First of all, um, I think because it's a save, and this is something I was actually talking to, 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 to B. Squigglehausen about. Um, I think it's probably fine because it's a save. I don't know if the new file will work anymore. So as a result, I've gone and grabbed a blank save and we'll give that to folks if if they want to use magnolia county after they update the editor so if it were to break the way that it would break would be that um basically i've added a bunch of lakes maybe i can maybe we'll take a, a momentary break from this after we get our trains implemented and i'll show you what i created and what i didn't um so basically there are some parts of the save that I've just really worked with the landscaping and, and tried to make all the spawn points remain where they were. The river is the original spawn point, so I didn't adjust that at all. I added a bunch of spawn points for the lakes in the big island, and that is the one place that could break. I could see the lakes drying out. So I struggled, I just full stop, getting the so basically just getting the spawn points to work it's not like in city skylines one at least not in its current iteration where you place a spawn point oh the autosave is just brutal um so you place the spawn point and then you lower it up and down and you can see what the water's doing you have to enter a coordinate and then you have to manually like go down to water level and it puts this big green blob over the top and then you have to enter a value. And the way that I found is easiest was to actually figure out the terrain height and then adjust up and down from there. So it was really a pain in the butt. And then you, there's not really any feedback about, I guess, whether it's going to dry out or not. So I ended up basically just staring at the water um, for longer than I should admit. <laughs> so all of uh all of that was was kind of a kind of a bear so i could see the ones that i added in particular so the way that i added them and this was kind of another conscious decision was i i cloned 
existing spawn points from River Delta rather than creating new ones. So the spawn points that I created are clones and I moved them. So I'm really hoping that that means that the map won't break. If it does, we will use mods to recess, to, to revive it. Just point blank. Um, we're, we're rolling with this series. Um, I've got a lot of plans for it. I've got, there's a lot of stuff that I'm waiting on right now that I, I um, the logo, for instance, is a temporary logo. There's actually one that I've commissioned. Uh, there's art that's been commissioned for the characters. Um, I've got a number of characters already created um, and the storylines imagined for them. So, um, yeah, I'm going to figure out how to make it work. My bigger concern is um, I would love to get it on the Paradox, uh, Paradox mods at some point. And I'm concerned that that won't be a possibility, but we'll see. Um, you know, if I have the opportunity to, to get in and, you know, get early access to, the, to that, I will, I will definitely give it a go. And uh, if not, it'll be something that is a priority of mine to make sure that it works for everyone else and that it doesn't break for me. So that is kind of where I'm at. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, plans or schemes? <laughs> GISP. Uh, so are, first of all, are you a GISP? And second of all, where's my evil lair? Probably inside of this rail depot or this, uh, this rail yard because it's pretty brutal what I'm doing to it. I'm not sure that any of this is okay. But we're doing it anyway because I don't know any better. So, um, and I don't I don't see any train enthusiasts yelling at me yet, or at least I've missed it in chat. <laughs> uh, please come fix traffic in Seattle, Washington. You guys want to know a project I worked on? I worked on bus consolidation in Seattle a long time ago. So when BRT was being implemented, I worked on the consolidation. So there we go. Now you have a project. Okay, airport. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> am I able? This looping thing here. Because so the way uh, you could make an argument that I placed this backwards. You could also make an argument that this is all part of the plan. <laughs> so... This crazy loop. Is this okay? Train people on YouTube. <laughs> As a train enthusiast, this rules. Okay. That, that right there, that's all I needed. <laughs> Way too many diamonds. Yeah, fair enough. I, I, I'm i inviting the train police to come and arrest me. <laughs> We're rolling with it because I don't really... So, should I just do the right thing and just reverse this? Oh, I should. Okay. I can't do polls because I'm not I'm not special enough. But in the chat right now, chat, let me know. Should I reverse this thing and put it in the right direction so we don't have all these looping shenanigans? Loops build character. Banana Man, I agree with you. Uh, no, no let chaos reign. I love it. Reverse it. Do it. Reverse it. No, do it. Chaos. Ha ha. Or, or YouTube. You know what? You guys... It's your time to shine. So everyone here on Twitch is now not going to be able to participate in this poll. And I apologize for that. But I blame Twitch for not giving me the ability to create a poll. So YouTube is now going to be able to have a poll. So reverse the train yard. Yes or no. And I am giving everyone on YouTube a couple of minutes. And in the meantime, I am going to open my door because City Skylines 2 has made my room about 80 degrees, maybe 85. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
It is so ridiculously hot in here. No. No is just thrashing. 61%. Everyone everyone is, is digging the craziness. Loops are cool. Time to log into YouTube. Be right back. I'll give, I'll give everyone a couple minutes. Uh, there is 1,765 people on YouTube right now. And... We're getting some hearts. Show, show me some hearts on YouTube. Love it. And 262 votes. So if you want to know when your vote matters, when there's 272 votes and there's almost 2,000 people in here, you vote and it's going to change the results. So do vote. Do vote. Get lots of hearts. Adds character. Chaos. Love it. We love the loops. Well, Twitch... YouTube is just a uh, Spotify. <laughs> I've seen. Uh, can we send links here? Is it blocked? Uh, banana. Can you allow? Or I guess. Can I? I think I can make you a VIP for a minute or something. I don't really know what I'm doing. I can follow you. Gazer, I can, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I would say try to send a link, and if it works, it'll work. I'm gonna get so many viruses. Are you talking about the modding scene, or is it all the links I'm gonna get? <laughs> Well, the good news is if I get a virus, it's just on my it's just on my OBS machine. You can't find the YouTubes. Uh there. There's the YouTubes. Uh 1,800 of you in there now. And uh should we reverse it? 55% currently say no. Almost 400 votes, but we're not even close to half. Bang glorious. Thank you so much for the five gifted subs on YouTube. I appreciate you. And I apologize for the audio <laughs> of that. Banana, thank you so much for uh, the direct link. That's much better. Stop the count. I will tell you, the longer we let this go, the closer yes gets to, to winning the day. So I think this is, it's gone on for three minutes now. I'm going to let it roll for about another two. And we can just take in, we'll take in, well, I wonder, why don't we get the, a sweet view of the Golden Gate? We'll follow this while we're, we're waiting. And, uh, cause I actually haven't, I haven't driven over this yet in the game. So now we're at 54%. The Bearded Cobra, that super generous of you. Thank you so much for the super chat. Vainglorious, thank you for another five gifted subs. Wow. The Bearded Cobra the the real mvp right now that is wow both both being glorious but i appreciate you both um the bearded cobra i am actively taking your name and uh we're gonna add you i've got this one note where i have all my scripts and it is where i also put my thank yous and you have earned a thank you at the end of the video, uh, in the credits. So check out, check that out. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. 54% to 46, 490 votes. Votes going away now. Are you guys trolling me? Is that, is that even possible? I didn't know you could take away a vote, but I'm seeing the votes go down. I think YouTube's getting back at me for being on Twitch. Tyler, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you so much. It's very generous of you. If you do not have gifted memberships available and you are on YouTube, make sure you have it enabled and you should be able to have the opportunity to, to, to receive them. 53% to 47 Twitch. YouTube is, uh, <laughs> YouTube does not like chaos or they do. They're removing votes and they're trying to get to 50%. I see it already. I see you guys. I know what you're up to. I'm not a fan. 
Once we cross the bridge, the pole is done. So I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on everyone on YouTube. And once we're done, once we get across the bridge and what is it, Marin County over here? And we're done. Diana, is that is that where uh, what's across the bridge, Marin? Star Wolf, you drove your mom to the poles <laughs> for the loops. <laughs> uh, Brandon Schaefer, thank you for being associate planner. Thank you for the thank you, thank you for joining. Appreciate you. Well, I would say it looks like we're about to end the poll. And uh, it's it's not a decisive victory. It's a very polarizing result. Ending it 53 to 47. We keep the loops, we keep the madness, and uh, we, we dig it. Thank you so much, YouTube, for making the decision and being the uh I, you guys aren't the council but maybe that maybe that's what we do for you guys you, you guys make some decisions uh, you guys are basically the the hired engineers convincing uh all the officials that this is totally cool this is how they do it everywhere else so why wouldn't we have a bunch of crazy loops <laughs> uh fetch of the rails that are from the end part the railroad side perhaps one of those needs to be connected to the tracks going west well, the other track, they're not actually going either way. So, yeah. Why? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. We need, yeah, we need to connect that. So let me just, uh, let me, let me straighten this out or as best I, as I can. So I think, so I, so first of all, I ran into issues in, uh, in Magnolia County where I didn't make all these connections. And they looked like they were all connected. So I want to avoid that. Let me, I love to use the continuous tool. I know that a lot of people wondered why. And it's kind of the weird angles I'm able to get. Although I end up with lots of janky stuff like that too. Let's give that one more go. There we go. I'm going to go with that. So we've got that connection made. Now we're going to have our cargo train station over here. And someday in the future, maybe we'll have, maybe we just go for a, a cargo harbor and just completely rethink this. I like that idea. So that means that we need to also have these heading this way. And have even more chaos and if you are a train enthusiast and I've, I've made you unsub from the channel I just want to say that I've appreciated you I appreciate you being here I apologize to you uh, I made this music no I did not I commissioned this music I worked with someone on it I told them what I was looking for and we went back and forth and we got to this and now you can use it if you want as well. If you're a streamer or a YouTuber, that is well within your right. It's available for download and for streaming. And hopefully lots of people use it because it's it's a shame to, to, to make all this and not have people use it. <laughs> oh, Meagle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the foamers are literally foaming the mouth over this. <laughs> You know what? I love this. I think this is great. YouTube, you just rocked it. This is exactly what should have happened. Um, let's see. So we got a couple more movements that need to be made. And maybe... Well, do I need to loop this or not? So I've got this one right here. I feel like... <laughs> the Wii music that's playing. <laughs> do I need a loop? Yes, I do. Maverick Hunter... BC Smith says no. Why not more loops? <laughs> Too many curves, not enough 90 degree angles. <laughs> uh, eat the city planner after this for sure. Let me just tell you, rail companies, they don't want the city planner. And uh, this is why. Not just this. I mean, this is uh, one of the reasons why. But I could do this. Man, this, this, this tool is just so cool. Look at all this madness that I can make. It doesn't care. That looks really sharp. 
like both sharp as in i don't know that that's reasonable and sharp as in that looks really cool i like that uh more loops than roller coaster tycoon i agree kind of say you love the commission music it does it does we could swap over to some epidemic sounds i could do that let's see if i can find my old city planner plays we'll switch over to we'll switch over to this we'll go with a little bit of epidemic sound stuff some sarah the instrumentalist uh do i have a public playlist on epidemic there's an old one um it's called favorites from city planner plays i should probably update it i also i had a sponsorship with them a while back it's funny they reached out to me and they were just like hey um we just want to put together a video on youtube with songs that you use a lot um is that cool and i was like absolutely and it was without a doubt the greatest sponsorship i've ever had no offense to any others um but being able to just put together a playlist of music that I thought was cool, you can't beat that. So yeah, that's out there too. This is insane. I can't, I'm, I'm doing some terrible things here. Um, I mean, the trains, they'd be able to pull forward and like reverse. So I shouldn't be doing some of this. I will get rid of this one, but I'm gonna keep those two because I think we need those. Um. Epidemic does this. It has it. Uh, super chats. Thank you, Twitch, for reaching out. Vince, can you add a maintenance depot? Uh, can you add a maintenance depot and add parking? Yes, that's a good idea. We should. There's a little bit here, but not a lot. And we did unlock parking, so we'll do that. So I've been really digging the medium parking lots because you can link them together. Uh, but it, it does give this a more industrial flavor to have all that pavement there. So I, I dig that, we'll go with that. Thank you so much again, Vince, for the uh, super chat. Appreciate you. Uh, Twitch, these aren't terrible, it's all fine. This playlist got you through college socks for you? It's good. I. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny that this didn't show up. I listen to this a lot. But yeah. Oh, don't delete that one. It was a structural loop. I need that. Train grid. Oh, boy. You guys are going to make me... You guys are going to make me do it. Okay. <laughs> the obsession with parking lots and city skylines too. Shaking your head. Uh, listen, I get it. So I will say though, it's a thing. Like, um, so I worked on a large project about parking and man, parking is controversial. I have a lot of feelings about parking, um, good and bad. So one of the things I'll say about parking is it's hard to dispute a bank. If the bank says you are going to do this because we're not gonna lend you money unless you have parking, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna say, no, morally, I don't like the parking, so we're not doing the parking. I don't care what you think, bank. Like, no, you're gonna do the parking because you have to do the parking. Uh, and that's ultimately, like the idealist in me, I wonder, can I move this whole thing over? It'd be really stupid if I can, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Oh yeah, no problem. We'll just relocate that. Um, anyway, so yeah, the, the, I mean, the bank is gonna drive a lot of parking decisions. So they're gonna say, uh, we do not believe that your development is viable if it doesn't have X amount of parking based on things that we've lent on in the past. Uh, so that is a thing that you're fighting against. 
And then you have developers who are also, you know, believe that their developments aren't gonna be viable without it. Um, and then you have people that just say, I'm not gonna go someplace if it doesn't have parking. So it's a tough one. Um, yeah. Private vehicles are the solution to unreliable public transit. That's that's true. I mean, the reason why people end up, in my opinion anyway, one of the reasons, not not the only reason, I mean, uh, is you, you can't take away people's vehicles when transit's no good. I mean, it's like just reasonably, if you think about that, like, like and I, I see that as the solution. I agree, you know, everyone should hop on their bike. Well, that's fine too. Again, that works for some people, but not everybody. Transit is the solution that should be able to work for most people if it's good. But I will tell you with my youngest, as a, as a young city planner, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm gonna prove we're gonna move the landfill. It's in the way. It shouldn't be over here anyway. Uh, I'm gonna prove that anyone can do it. We don't. We don't need to worry about. Uh, we don't need to worry about a car. We'll be just fine with uh, uh, with with public transit. And then the very first time that my daughter got sick, I remember the day vividly. It was like 10 degrees outside, Fahrenheit. Uh, this would be negative something in in uh, in uh, Celsius. And I. I had to hop on the bus. It was the middle of the day. The daycare, I made sure the daycare was right next to my work. So I, I walked to the daycare. I get my daughter. She's six months old. She has a fever. And the way it works when you have a kid, uh, when they're that young, they've got a fever. They're done. They're just like, go home. You're, you're home with them for 24 hours. It stinks. So I'm in this situation now where I don't have a vehicle. And I've got this just precious little child that is totally defenseless and i don't have a car seat i you know i you know my wife had dropped her off um it was it was it was a mess and i so the options were that i would either go and try to take a taxi to a car and then drive back to my work or take her on the bus so i took her on the bus but we had to wait and it was midday so tra transit service was just trash and uh i had to sit outside with her for a long time and it made me it made me go oh man if your transit service stinks like there's just a whole bunch of people who aren't gonna be able to do anything with it and at that point in time i was one of those people so yeah if your transit service service stinks you can't get mad at people for owning a car i mean reasonably i don't think you should get mad at people for that anyway it's their call um I think that we need to be more reasonable about it as a society. Um, but you certainly can't get mad at people if, if there's no good transit. But so much waste of space? Absolutely. Absolutely. But if your city is already oriented around it, you need to plan for what you want in the future. We need to also acknowledge the reality of what is there now. So restore the structural loop. Add, can I add a maintenance depot? Like I, like you said in super chat, I will do that. I think I had that unlocked. Let me figure out where I'm placing the landfill first and then I'll do that. We'll have a <laughs> welcome to our city. Here's our landfill. I think we're going to buy. There's just no good place for this. I just don't want to have a landfill. Ultimately, is where I'm at. Does the incinerator work right now? I want to say that it does. Ship it out on barges. That's what I want to do. All right. Because I'm using all the development points anyway. And we're spending all the money. Let's just get an incinerator. It'll fit better over here. And then we'll also add in. Oh, everyone's looking, everyone loves that. And then we'll also add in our uh, road maintenance depot. And I am very sorry that I missed your super chat 
very sorry about that. All right. So I think we will try. I mean, we'll just I, we can keep that over here. That's not a problem. The land use itself wasn't a bad land use for this area. It's just that it, oh, it's huge though. That's one of the. That's nice. I mean, it stinks that it's this big, but it's also probably fairly reasonable. So we'll have this. This will be an excellent thing to see when you enter the community. <laughs> um, we'll place that right about here in our little industrial district. And we're going to need... This is driving home to me that we're going to need more capacity over here. There's this one road that has a ton of capacity. It kind of just ends right here. There's no real hierarchy, so to speak of. We're just having fun, just trying out some things, so it'll be fun. Uh, Rufus the Poodle, thank you so much for the super chat. Been a resident since Clearwater and haven't paid any taxes. Thanks for the content and thanks for the taxes. Appreciate you, Rufus. Rufus the Poodle, love it. Uh, that's. I appreciate you sticking with me since Clearwater. Uh, and that's interesting too. There's been a lot of questions recently about Clearwater County and I will be ending it gracefully it's not done gee 23 months of an associate planner on YouTube thank you uh thank you for being here and gee I am chatting much more over on Twitch so just know if you're chatting in here you might be chatting amongst friends but I'm probably just interacting a chat on Twitch and right now we are building out this industrial complex. I don't know why we're doing this. This isn't what I intended to do, but this is what happens on chat. I just end up chatting and getting confused about what I'm actually supposed to be doing. Our population basically hasn't moved. I've dezoned things and I just keep adding more and more industrial stuff. And now, of course, I realize this building, oh, it has a power line in the back and it probably should be spun that way rather than this way that's bad planning <laughs> so <laughs> road maintenance depot yeah i'm gonna take a break from this monstrosity and we'll put in the road maintenance depot and then we'll think about that again and i think i know that we're gonna beef up our capacity over here and this doesn't have a sub building this is fairly centrally located so I think we'll put it right about here. Yeah, no sub building. It's right on there. So we should be fine. Um, You could just do underground power from the incinerator. I never think to do that. So yeah, it will power through the low voltage lines in the road. Do I need to connect it? Do I actually need to connect this thing? I mean, it's mainly for the icon. I hate that blinking icon. It drives me nuts. I think for the icon alone, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, you should consult City Planner Plays uh, to help you work on that. <laughs> oh, you meant the train one, but that one works. Airport. Train maintenance. We're still working on the train. I'm getting all distracted. The reason why I even got distracted is because I wanted to add rail to this and make sure that I didn't make it impossible. And of course I've done that too. <laughs> so this is the asset exploration that you guys get to do with me. So this cannot go right here because we're going to need to loop our train around. And now we need to figure out a way to get the train connection over here, which is going to be an absolute monster. So we're looping around, we're bridging, we're doing all sorts of things. Trains can go under around. Yeah, what am I thinking? That is exactly what we should be doing. Uh, D. Grega, just wanted to say that your YouTube videos have been getting better and better. I've been homebound after being injured at work and discovered your channel on YouTube. Your expertise and humor really helped Take my mind off things. Keep up the great work, my friend. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I've been really focusing on the quality 
of the videos lately and i appreciate that you're noticing that it's something that um i really 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 want to uh improve i want basically my goal is that i want you guys to to know that if you're gonna if you if, if you're gonna give me your time you know that the video i'm giving you is is my all and that i've tried my best i'm gonna temporarily oh that's really expensive for temporary temporary relocation and we don't have a lot of money so we really do need to nail this oh oh this is tough i'm going to we're going to adjust the terrain because i didn't respect the topography here And then I'll spin this around on this road that I add right here. So my idea is I'll spin this so that I can get the power going in the right direction. We'll send the train underground and then we'll connect it up over here. So hopefully that resolves all of the concerns. In the meantime, Gray Tiger Games, have you experienced any issues with using dev mode? I've been considering activating it for my next game. Uh, Gray, I've only used dev mode for weather until tonight when you all goaded me into using it for um, basically anarchy. And we made sure to save right before we used it. You gotta be kidding me. Uh, we saved right before we used it and uh, it worked just fine. So I would say um, in my limited experience, I've, I mainly use it for the weather. And I will say, I will readily admit um, that I've been using it for the weather nonstop. So I did see a comment saying, in the most recent video saying, oh my goodness, there was a tornado in uh, on a sunny day. Well, it was a sunny day because every day is a sunny day in, uh, in Magnolia County. Everything's perfect all the time. <laughs> so... That's why James has got to calm down because it's the perfect place. Unlike this place where apparently the streets are just a little bit off and it's all just to drive me crazy. There, something like that. Something like that'll be just fine. And then I'm going to run this up along the side here and then I'm going to take a quick momentary break from driving myself crazy okay Woo. hello good morning from warsaw how early is it in poland right now thank you for being here uh but boy oh boy is it early vainglorious yeah we, we uh yeah but i've had tornadoes on sunny days in city skylines too anyway are too many yeah so there have been a lot of tornadoes i i've, I've noticed a lot of them um so the most of them have happened when I'm not recording. So yeah. Uh Dr. Kevin, my wife has been uh not liking City Skylines 2 because I showed her your videos. Thank you. Has been no liking City Skylines 2 because I showed her your videos. Thank you so much for allowing her to be distracted so I can play my own games. <laughs> I wish that I could get my wife to try City Skylines 2. She's just not into it. Although she's talked about potentially making a video with me and where I teach her how to play it. I'm afraid that we'll have a, I'm just afraid, you know, like there's a test of your marriage and that might be one of them because there's a lot to learn in city skylines. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Mrs. CPP. Okay. Uh, will the tutorial videos be returning Saturday? Indeed. Uh, it should be nearly edited. And then I will... So the game plan for me tomorrow, a little behind the scenes ball, is that uh, in the morning when I wake up and the kids are gone, Oh, that's 8%. It's probably a lot. Well, it's at the beginning. It's fine. Uh, I'm going to work on the next episode of Magnolia County. Do you guys want to know what it's about? 
I can I can I can tell you or I can hold off. If you guys want to keep a secret, I can let you know. And I am glancing over at you YouTube too. Um so I'm going to be recording Magnolia County tomorrow and the next video for Tutoria, the Ultimate Beginner's Guide will come out on Saturday and it's going to be creating a streetcar suburb. So I wanted to bring trams in, but I wanted to do so in a way that isn't just, here's how you do trams. So that's the way that we're going to do it. We're going to build a gigantic suburb. It's going to be massive and it's going to be a ton of fun. And you know what? The reason why this, this slopes here is so crazy is I had my step wrong. So I think that we're going to adjust this right here. Yeah, the slopes are incredibly realistic. What am I doing in the next Magnolia? I see there's enough people. So we're going to be doing some rural stuff. Um, so I think that's been what's been missing in the build is right. And then and, so I will readily admit that before I started Magnolia County, uh, if you want a really quick way to just like zoom past a whole bunch of the milestones, shout out to Toady. You can just place like I don't know 15 of your small coal power plants and you will basically get to milestone five or six or something like that and basically unlock all the farms so i thought about doing that but i worried that i would lose people they're like what are you what are you doing this is the, this is where you're going to begin just unlocking everything like that unceremoniously uh so i didn't do that uh, but I definitely thought about it. And if I were playing by my, my, my by my lonesome, for sure, <laughs> would have just unlocked everything and not cared at all. But I um, have to think about that sometimes. Uh, Chucky, hi, is a city actually called Newmarket? I live in a town called Newmarket, Ontario, Canada. It used to be, but now it is uh, Tombstone because we have very little besides industry and a very elaborate cemetery. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. All right, so I'm sending this underground. It's it's still 12.5 meters down, which I will readily admit to not knowing, not having a good reference point in my mind for what 12.5 meters is, but it sounds like a lot. So I am concerned. I'm also not loving the direction. So that's another thing that I really hope gets uh, addressed in this game is I would personally like the, the meters. I want to understand them, but I don't. Um, I'd love to be able to use feet, but we have yards, so I can't. That's why we're still using meters. So I'll probably continue to do that. And honestly, I would love to have units back, uh, which is something that this mod that I have in here does. It does allow you to take a look at units, which can be really helpful as well. Let's see. We're almost at ground level. 3.5%, 3.1, we'll call it fine. We'll roll with that. And now I need to get this thing into this mess. Wow, this seems really not great <laughs> but we're gonna do it this seems like this isn't right right train people you're you're gonna this is a lot of connections coming into a single track i'm gonna make it and then i want you to tell me how wrong i am and if there's any way to fix it um yeah, I can set the imperial measurements, but it's yards. The only time that that we use yards are really football. I don't know any other time when I would use yards. It's a, it's a very bizarre measurement. Time to take another poll. <laughs> I think that this is beautiful and it's exactly what this city needs. Uh, it's good for business and good for the community. So we're going to roll with it. Uh, let's, let's clean it up though. And I feel like for the VOD, so I don't get yelled at, I'm going to have to change the title to something about, 
uh, a complete trained novice destroys a rail network for uh, a few hours. <laughs> and for anyone who's deeply disturbed by everything that I'm doing right now, I am sorry, but I'm also not that sorry because I, I am having fun and I appreciate y'all hanging out with me while I do this. This is something that getting the real time feedback from you all and not seeing it in, in a restore the, you know, we're here. We'll restore the loop. So we get crazy loops. We get all these tracks turning into a single track. This is just, this is just what everyone called for. This is exactly what was needed in this area. We'll get it looking pretty, but I don't know that it's going to work well. Then again, I'm excited to get this thing moving. So, I, you know, even if this thing doesn't work right, doesn't it just look good? At least in my mind, it does. I think we'll change a little bit of this though. So I'm going to take this. Hmm. So I wanted to run it into this one. I don't know if it's going to let me though. Let's give it a go. Yeah, it's, anything is possible in City Skylines too. Except for getting mail, apparently. You can't do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, DeGrega, DeGrega, the, the uh, loops are scaring you. I think that this is beautiful. This shouldn't scare you. This, this is a piece of art. This city is a work of art. Our stream city is cemeteries and trains. <laughs> that's that's all that we're doing here. And I don't even know that we're doing either of them particularly well, but we're doing them nonetheless. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> uh, Loop Railroad Company. Now that right there. If, if someone were to make a t-shirt that says that, I would wear that. Because that is the railroad company that I work for. And there's like just these little bumps that I'm not sure if it's the curve tool that I'm using that is creating that, but it looks bad. And if this is going to function bad, it has to at least look good. That's really what this is. It's aesthetic railroads. Just what everyone's looking for. <laughs> All right. Wait, so I can't place a cargo rail route until I place the terminal. Really? <laughs> loop the loop railroad. <laughs> I love that. Uh, am I really Kendall Marshall? Look like him. At least I used to when he went back to 2013. I don't know what he looks like now. So I have to add this thing. For this to work. So I wonder if I just need to place it once. I can't afford this. But apparently we're going to... Oh, this will level me up. It's fine. So now... I can draw my cargo route. That is... Uh, we found a bug. Chat, we found a bug. Feel good about this. If you... Get... The cargo harbor and try to do that first... You can't draw a route. My job here is done for today. We've caught a bug. And that is our route. Is that our only route that we have? Wow, that was a lot of work just to be able to go to San Jose. <laughs> well, at least get rid of this. And now we should be going to go. So let me see. Does this line, let's make sure the line actually shows up. It's real long. And let's get a view of this while I take a, a quick momentary break in chat. We'll watch this. And we even, we even, even get our, our uh, we got our route view on. Let's see. And we're gonna get to see this go underground apparently. Whoa, look at that. We get to see the ocean on either side. That is some beautiful. <laughs> okay, well, we'll speed past this. Uh, but you can't, so that's a bug. Yes, we did it, team. We're done. 
Uh, train's going 44 feet down. Is that what? Is that what? Uh, 12.5 meters is. Wait, they already backed out. That was it. Feels real loopy. I mean, it doesn't seem crazy. That that's the the grades weren't terrible. Now, is anything on this? Shouldn't be. No, totally empty. I love it, and it's going backwards. Um, I wonder uh, if the same thing when the when the repos we have a cargo rail line in the small. Yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder. So, uh, Interjar makes a good. Uh, point. I think that this probably with the, with the airport, if you were to add the airport first and try to connect up with the rail with the airport and the in the cargo yard, it probably doesn't work. I'm guessing. So that's that's one of those edge cases that I'm guessing when they were doing QA. OK, one. Feet, OK. All right. That's that's helpful. Uh, Gazer. Um, my guess is no one tried this during QA because why would they? So. But here we are. Uh, third tier gaming. Hey, I love your videos. First time catching a stream. Uh, what would you like about a snap to center? What would you like about a snap to center of a road setting? I've noticed that there's a big issue with road building. Would I like a snap to center of the road setting? Uh, it's there. I would like the snapping tools generally to be stronger. That is another piece of feedback that I relayed during the development process that I just thought that the snapping tools we're just generally not strong enough. Um, and I still feel that way. I think that that's the reason why the grid breaks. So we're going to try to connect this. Okay. We just lost a tool. Um, we'll try to connect this up. We'll run it. We've got gremlins. We're going to send this underground, actually. We will preserve the looks of the community here. And maybe we'll just drop it down and oh, we can't because of our tunnel unless we go around our tunnel. So we will. Uh, oh, we've got to do this right if we're going to do it. We've got to put this underneath the road, even if that's not exactly where it belongs. We'll put it next to it and then I'll, I'm going to try to run it in the highway right of way. That's honestly where it would seem to make the most sense to me. I don't know where you'd put an underground. I mean, to me, burying this is a foreign concept, but we'll go for it. There we go. Now we're all connected. All's good there. And I owe airport a large fire station. So let's unlock that. I've actually, I don't think I've ever used this asset which is probably a surprise to nobody um, that I'd never used a large fire station. So we have, we have a fire station over here already, a small one right here, the firehouse. I don't think we want to delete this thing necessarily. I'm going to move this over to our industrial district. We'll centrally locate this, the height of realism. And then we'll place one of these new fire stations. Wow, this thing is big. That is something that I love. It's like these assets, they force you, particularly if you're building on a grid, to rethink your grid and break it up. We've got this lovely grid that we've been building that has absolutely nothing on it. I think we'll place that right over here. Let's get rid of this. And we'll put this uh, right about there. That's centered. And now we can decorate around there or something in the future. I don't know that that is a today thing. I don't know that we're going to finish up with a bunch of landscaping of something completely bizarre. But you never know. That could be a thing that we make a that we make a, a chat thing, a Twitch thing. Let's see. Bigger station with more engines and larger influence area. Okay. Um, Sparky Wood, how to get a girlfriend. The biggest piece of advice, talk to girls. Talk to girls, be nice, be a gentleman. 
it goes a long ways. A lot of a lot of crappy guys out there. <laughs> um, I know it's a CPP video when uh, video is about to end with film landscapes. It is a reward for me. It uh, I had this habit in City Skylines one of just not doing it and uh, ending up. I'd, so I'd watch other people's videos and I'd see that oh, like they've got this beautiful whatever. And it's because at the end of their video, they actually took the time to landscape. Um, and that's when I began to love it after I started doing it a little bit. <laughs> Vic, that was the most concise answer. <laughs> yeah. Reasonably, when it, when it comes to getting a girlfriend, what would I know now? I, I, I met my wife uh, not on an app or anything like that. I met her at a bar when she was hanging out with someone I knew. So terrible. Like I, I am, I'm an old fogey now who wouldn't know anything about dating today. I've been married for at this point, ten years. But it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Uh, Twitch told me to say hello. I clicked the staff icon. <laughs> well, Doctor Camille, thank you for being here. Wait. Do we have do we have Twitch staff in here again? If so, I have been on my best behavior and I did not violate TOS tonight. Aha! First necker on your back. Thank you for being here. I promise I'm I'm being good and I'm going to hit that affiliate someday. It's going to be amazing. In fact, I'm pretty sure that we're 30 minutes away from 8 hours in the last 30 days and if I get that, we are going to be able to do polls. And ultimately, I just want to poll people. <laughs> oh, and that's going to get taken out of context. Anyway, um, we're going to move this and center this. Let's see. Phil, are you still working as a city planner? I am not. Not anymore. No. Uh, so the main reason and I've mentioned this on a YouTube stream in the past, I was, a I was working as a city planner this year still. Um, and I started to realize that I might be a bit of a distraction with, uh, with, with my extracurricular activities. Um, and I realized that when we had a, a public meeting that, uh, drew enough people to close down our zoom license. And there were people from all over the world. So I love you all. But also that was kind of, uh, <laughs> that was an experience. That was an experience. So I, I also had people approach me at the meeting and, you know, say like, I love your videos, man. And I was like, yeah, I'm probably a distraction at this point. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things where I loved it. I'll probably go back to doing something in planning in the future. Um, but I've always. I had an opportunity to go and get a doctorate coming right out of grad school. I got invited to, to the program in Denver and I decided against it because at the time I thought I really need to work in the field before I can do that. And now I've had my time. Then I think it might, that might be something that in the future I pursue, but for now I'm going to have a lot of fun with all of you guys. So that is, that is kind of where I'm at. Yeah, that wasn't my finest, uh, my finest quote. <laughs> uh, that cursed junction. Yes. Involuntary, voluntarily retired city planner plays. Now I am just straight up city planner plays. So I'm cool with that too. I'm having a good time. I'm going to get rid of this. Maybe that fixes some of this and then maybe I can. It'll let me get away with some real messy stuff. Good enough. Good enough. Uh, come to Colorado. I, boy, oh boy, there was a point in time where I was uh, very, very close. What did Diana say? That was funny. I got my chat. Apparently there were so many messages that I couldn't see it. Uh, am I going to release the town at the end of Twitch stream? Some random person. Do you want me to 
the save is that what you mean i could put the save on discord i don't mind <laughs> cpp will i do a crossover with city planner mismanages <laughs> i don't know i haven't done any collaborations in a minute but i do love city planner mismanages i do watch um hey phil nice to see you live do you know why the city income upkeep jumps around yes First of all, we have no money. Oh my goodness. We're going bankrupt. We're about to make this an unlimited money city because of uh, what's going on. So I apparently have no service trade. That's a problem. And we're importing services, but we have lots of service upkeeps because we've been building things. So the main reason why everything jumps around is garbage management has been the thing that for me in Magnolia County, has been jumping up and down. It'll go plus 300,000 and negative 98,000, whatever. You know, so that's the one. Keep an eye on that one. We also have adjusted taxes here. Let's just. You're all going to pay if you want to live here because we've got a one heck of a cemetery. We've got to pay for it. Dr. Phil. That. <laughs> CPP plus RCE plus city planner mis mismanages. Now, I, I love RCE. Also, just a, a real nice guy. Okay, we're balancing. We're we're gonna we're gonna exist. We can we can do this. I'm gonna zone a whole bunch of stuff to try to not go bankrupt. And I talked about a whole bunch of low density. Nah, <laughs> we need. We need we need density. Oh, actually, it's all we have demand for. So okay, fine. I will bite, and we'll go through all of this chaos right here, and zone it and see what we come up with. This really should be row homes. It kind of kills me that the medium density or that the row homes are medium density. It feels like they should be low density, but just really small. I don't know what you guys think about that. If burger is a problem, just make the graveyard look better. Budget. <laughs> I might just landscape my way into uh, into bankruptcy. And call it a day. I'm not a finance person. I'm a planner. So don't don't come to me for financial advice. Clearly, I will bankrupt you. We'll lose a we'll lose ten thousand dollars an hour together. <laughs> uh, is there any way to support me with buying City Skylines too? Uh, yes. For the next couple of days. Uh, hold on. So the sad thing is I've had Nexus.gg for a long time. And they've been excellent to work with. And they were one of Paradox's official partners for, uh, you know, reselling Steam keys. And unfortunately, they do not have an agreement with Paradox after the 4th. So my Nexus store is shutting down. And I will not be doing instant gaming or anything like that. I just don't. Uh, not a fan. So if they, if they heard that, there you go. Now you know. They reached out. The answer is no. <laughs> Hold on one second. Okay, here it is. If you want to buy City Skylines 2 through my store, run. You got four days <laughs> and then it shuts down. <laughs> so yes, we will go bankrupt landscaping. Um, but things seem to be going fine. But again, we want more commercial for some bizarre reason. Though the moment that we, we zone this in, we'll immediately not like it you know what leveling the terrain's free apparently so let's level some terrain and add in some uh commercial and see if that helps i'm sure it won't but we'll go for it anyway there we go all right let's see if this helps i don't think it's gonna do anything um well, we got to do something to make money. The only other option is spam, which I'm not opposed to. Oh, we need the internet too? 
Okay, YouTube, it's your time to shine. I'm gonna ask you guys in a poll. Should I spam to reach the next level? Starting the poll. So the goal would be that we're about to run out of money. I'm gonna quickly go through all of this. If this number is true, which I guess that's something that we can do while the poll's going on. Um, the funny thing is we look at this and it's telling me that that we're losing money rapidly but i look at this chart and it says everything's fine now the granted it's one month <laughs> this has been a good stream you could tell and we've had some good times um the one month it looks like we're actually holding steady maybe making money even though it says we're losing it um but it looks like youtube is is into this i'm gonna give youtube a couple of minutes um so basically mrs ducky i would spam an asset we're gonna have to look through the assets and see what will give us the most experience points at the cheapest rate and we would just place a whole bunch of them so that we could get to milestone seven and get 1.6 million dollars and not need to use the unlimited money mod so this is city government 101 uh this is what they do they gamify city building so that they can uh get free grants from the state and federal government <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what we will do potentially although it's looking i mean it looks like youtube i'm gonna i'm just we're just gonna go with it i think youtube at 73 percent ending the poll we're doing it so let's see what will actually help us the most i'm gonna guess it's gonna be some park uh, let's see do we actually know the experience points we don't so it doesn't tell us i wonder let's see what this this small playground is super cheap and we can place one of these anyway this is 100 experiences so if i hover over i can see what it is so this is 100 it's 5000 this is 100 it's 20000 so the small playground is looking like a winner right now uh 100 wait so are these all 100 so the small playground is a solid way to level up uh let me look at the small coal power plant this is 300 and it's a hundred thousand no what you know what i don't need to see anymore we're going for it oh and we are going to definitely hit the next level and this is the very best way there we go busy town we're not going bankrupt we're good tiny park it's amazing we're having a good time and we've got all the development points all the money and we can unlock even more tiles and we've got this beautiful demonstration of the best of what the game is <laughs> let's just uh i didn't see this you didn't see this we'll just get rid of all of this and uh we don't ever have to talk about this again and I'm still getting experience points. And I apologize for the ding, 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 ding. It's never gonna end. There we go. The only evidence is a couple of small trees and the never ending dings in the corner. Ah, <laughs> uh, Vic, yes, you are now watching the, uh, the spiffing Brit. <laughs> And now we're good now we're good so i never actually connected this up to anything so that is another so like not only oh dang it now we're gonna buy more tiles and connect this thing up so i think we should be able to go into here and i want to look oh right here outside connections so now we can make a nice connection after we buy these tiles There, we'll get those. We're going to be ending soon. We've got to make sure that this thing is running in tip top condition and is ready for another stream. And then I want to know, do you guys want this save? If you want it, I'm super happy to drop it in the discord and let you guys make this a better place than I could ever make it while I'm on stream doing crazy things. Um, 
But if not, because it's not a great city, that's fine too. <laughs> We're just having fun. So let's see what are. So let's see what people are saying. Three hours already. Yeah, time is flying. Um, have I ever thought about making a city with underground roads only? No, I wouldn't work. I wanted to, so I thought about doing the line, but someone beat me to it on uh, on Reddit. That's the one weird thing, and they've done it so well that there's no point in me doing it. Uh, but short of that, I'm open to challenges. I think that they're fun, and it's a nice way to break things up, but I haven't really contemplated many right now. Morning from South Africa. Thank you for being here. What time is it in South Africa right now? Uh, Pineapple Pizza, City Skylines 2 does not have meteors. It's a shame. Um, Try to do the line as well. It's a fun challenge. I enjoy watching. So I think... Mm, affiliate stream time requirement met. Let me look. So the real question... Do I... Oh, 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 oh. I'm in, I'm in someone else's uh, Kai Senat. We don't want to listen to that. We're good. Hold on one second. I'm going. I'm taking a look. I think. So is this going to update in real time? I have no idea because I still look at this dashboard and it looks totally foreign to me, but it's well laid out. It's well laid out and confusing. <laughs> my journey is that what it is i need i need help from a uh, twitch staff <laughs> where do i find this i have no idea i'm gonna say i'm pretty close to the requirement it's probably pretty close i'm, I'm looking achievements it's under achievements. In creator dashboard? Hmm. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm not seeing, but I'm looking. Oh, give me one second. I'm going to I'm going to figure this out. This is going to bug me now. So now I have to know. Now I have to know. Analytics achievements. Okay, analytics achievements. Got it. Uh path to affiliate. You have to reach 50 followers. We did that. You have to stream for 8 hours. So we were at 4.44 as of last time. Got to stream on 7 different days. Failed. In in the in 30 days. So I think we're gonna have to speed run some of this and maybe we come back and uh, do a little bit of Civ 5. I think maybe maybe I'll do it this weekend and we'll stream in a couple different days. Now, the big thing is I have to average oh, three viewers. I think we're good there too. 420, 30, 435 here right now. So yeah, the big thing is I just don't stream enough. So I just have to stream on, on more days. This is day two, I have to have seven. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, so with Civ, so I my favorite, and I, I don't know if you, so I like to do one of two things. I either like to have a huge map and just like kind of go all out and play forever and have a whole bunch of Civs and most likely lose, or I like to play on a tiny map and load up the number of Civs on Pangea and have a whole bunch of uh, combat. Love that. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely a speedrunning partner. <laughs> I think for partner, you need to have a lot more, though. Uh, but for affiliate, we can get there. We can get there. So let's see. Got this going. We got our ships. Do the ships have anything going on? Nope, but it looks good. This one's got some stuff coming in. So we got we got some petrochemicals coming in. At least this thing, if, we're, if this thing's going to cost us money... We better be getting something out of it. So now at least we are. Um, 
Shoshone's pretty good. I, so my favorite Civ is Maria, Spain. I mean, being placed next to a natural wonder and then having it double. I mean, can you really beat that? I mean, come on. <laughs> no, but it looks good is the slogan of the city, except that it doesn't. I hate this interchange right here. Um, I love this. It's wonderful. Everything about that's wonderful. Um, and now we have some demand for uh, our row homes. So we'll add a few more of those as well. Uh, row homes with a beautiful view of the cemetery. What more could you ask for? So I think we're going to fill in the rest of our zoning around here and make that our goal. Oh, that's actually high density. Well, I don't want to add high density. That doesn't make any sense. Except for the, uh, I guess, low rent. If we were to look... At our land value and find a place that's very inexpensive. So low rent would do poorly anywhere in this area. And it'll eventually do poorly around the coast. So I could probably do near the yeah, the interchanges even even has some value. Honestly, near the cemetery. This might be the only place with kind of poor land value. And now, with this height, a perfect view right down to the center. Does your city make money? No, but it looks like a million bucks. No, makes no money, but it looks great. And truthfully, the funny thing is we are making money somehow, I think. No, we're breaking even. It says we're losing money, but we're, at, we're not actually. Okay. I think, I think that we're going to have to leave this one. And we're gonna have to come back to this with some new ideas and some new approaches. But we are making some progress, even if it's bizarre progress and still focused around industrial and the cemetery. Um, so I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes in chat and then uh, we've got to figure out who we want to raid. So uh, I think for now, I am gonna say goodbye to YouTube so Twitch on the chat, can we give YouTube a bunch of hearts to send them out in style? I'm getting, I'm getting your prime subs. I appreciate that. I don't really know what that means, but I appreciate that. So let's say goodbye to YouTube. Thank you so much. YouTube for being here. 1,565. I see some hearts in YouTube too. We get some hearts. You might not be able to see it, but I can see it. And I will tell you that they're just flying. And uh, I appreciate all of you being here. I appreciate all the support, the super chats, um, and the the you know your time. Three hours and thirty minutes of us hanging out, building a city that's poorly constructed. Uh, 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 actually, 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 I said I was gonna do something that I didn't do, and maybe I should. Let's save this real quick. So I told you guys that I was going to show you Tutoria or uh, Magnolia County where I added water. So before I do that, before I say goodbye to YouTube, I am going to show you guys this. I'll make sure that I saved. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yes, we're good. So go way back to Magnolia County episode one. And it's funny. So now you can see how I do all my tons of little pieces. That's how I do it. So I'm going to show you where I added spawn points. So where this map could break. Um, so basically I added spawn points here. I added one right here, one right here, one right here. I added four of them in here to get this working. So I think that there's one right here, a big one right here, a small one here, another one right here. And then I did the same thing with this one and this one. So these spawn points are all clones of spawn points that were already in here, which, oh, we've even got the right song playing. I don't know uh, exactly why there were spawn points here, but I just grabbed them and cloned them over. This was actually with the map. I adjusted it a little bit, but this should still work. And the river has one spawn point up here, and it's just fine. Now, interestingly, 
this body of water doesn't have a spawn point and it still works. Uh, that also came with the map. So I really adjusted the terrain and added a bunch of land. So I hope that the map stays working. We'll have to see. Anyway. Yes, cats walking. We're doing good. That's the right way to send off YouTube. I see the I see the party, uh, the, uh, the, the, the hearts, the 100s. The party emoji. I want to thank you all on YouTube. We're going to let you go so that we can uh, raid someone over here on Twitch. But thank you all so much. I will t say before I let you guys go, uh, if we do something that is not uh, City Skylines, we will not be multicasting. So do think about subscribing on Twitch or not subscribing, but following. And um, I will be there for other uh, for other games. But whenever we do uh, anything with this city, we'll, we'll make sure that we get both. Anyway, thank you so much, YouTube. And I will catch you next time. And now it's just you and me, Twitch. And they're gone. All right. <laughs>